Hello and welcome to episode 39 of the Gamers of the Lost Spark podcast. I'm Darren Whittam and joining me this week is the other spark on the pod, the Spencer to my Yoshida, back in audio after our fantastic full video adventure last week. It's Anthony Chesson. Oh, I like being Phil Spencer. <laughs> I thought you would. Oh, if only, if only. That'd be so cool. Actually, do you know what? I probably wouldn't do anything different to him because Phil was doing a, a stonking job, isn't he? He does. He does a good job. He doesn't back down, does he? He stands up for he what he believes in. How are you doing, Des? I'm okay, mate. I'm okay. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. It feels, it feels weird. You're not sitting next to me in our in our studio, uh, in our <laughs> fine studio. I know. It's, it's strange, isn't it? I mean, just for um, listeners who saw our video extravaganza last week, uh, Anthony and I actually live about 300 miles apart. So we don't get together that often, do we? But we did last week for uh, for our video, and yeah, it was uh, it was it was it was a bit weird, wasn't it? Even though we do this all the time, um, we were actually next to each other, which is which is a rarity. No, it was fantastic. Stars were aligning. I was in Manchester for a couple of days for business, so it kind of just made sense to pop over to Blackpool and do some filming. And I and you know and and it's been great. You know, thank you very much, everyone who has watched the YouTube clip, who has commented either on the on the comments or personally to us. It's been the feedback has been fantastic. You know, I think it's got a bit of a hit, and hopefully, you know, we'll try and get the stars aligning again, and we can get over to Globe Gig Studios and and do some more of those. Yeah, yeah, and thanks very much again to Globe Gig Media for uh, working it all out for us and uh, letting us use their facilities, their green screen, and making it look so professional. It really was cool, and we'll have to try and do more, because uh, I think it was good. It, it just felt good doing it, didn't it? It did indeed. It felt really good just sitting next to you, chatting about our favourite hobby, chatting about games, and just kind of really getting into it. It just felt it just felt really good. It just felt really good. I feel like I should have like a... Uh, a video going so I could just see you, Daz. I'm missing you as we're podding. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It feels in, in a way that we've sort of regressed technologically. But, you know, what can you do? What can you do? But, we've, we've got the pod. Indeed, indeed. This is a fantastic medium, and we'll try and get some, some more of those for those who kind of, you know, didn't mind seeing our faces. Um, so, how's how's your week been? My week's uh, been good and right. expensive. Ooh, hello. Yeah, so... As you know, Vive came out on uh, the 29th, which was Monday. Yes. We're recording this on Wednesday the 2nd, as uh, I didn't just say. <laughs> yeah, so we're recording it on the 2nd. And um, yeah, 29th, Vive came out at 3pm GMT, and I was there ready. And uh, yeah, I took the plunge and bought it. Fantastic. Superb. Yeah, so I had the courage of my convictions, and um, I've jumped in, though I was anxious all day, thinking I'm doing the right thing, I haven't tried it yet, etc. Um, but yeah, I pre-ordered it. So, hooray! That was good, and the experience was was pretty good. I was watching the countdown um, right. on the website for about 10 minutes. It got to zero, and it wasn't, an in- it wasn't as elegant as I would have hoped for. It didn't just naturally get to zero and then switch to pre-order. It took about five minutes so of refreshing and retrying to get through to it but i was doing this on my ipad um right on the street essentially because i was waiting for my son to come out of school at the time because it's sort of that that that's the time he comes out of school um mm-hmm. so what i did uh, i was doing i was doing it on an ipad so i didn't really have like a plethora of pages ready and waiting to sort of be clicking on and it was okay you know i just refreshed a few times Said to my mate, ah, oh, it's looking a bit dodgy. Um, this is going to be my evening, F5 in this. Um, and then it sprang to life a few minutes later. Pre-order appeared, went in. And it was it was really nice and painless. It didn't crash out. Let me pre-order it. Bit of a sting in the tail with the shipping cost that was not mentioned up until the point of purchase. Um, right. £57.60 um, wow. was the shipping cost. So I was like, oh, mate, is it as if it's not enough that it's like 690 quid. Was it? Mm. It's like they have to do that on top, and I was just like, "Oh my goodness me!" That's that's just a bit of a sting in the tail. Um, but I was thinking about it, and I don't know if I mentioned it on the last pod, but the the conversion rate's actually not too bad because um, it came out at the American price um, is eight hundred dollars. That converts to about five hundred and seventy seven pounds, or it did when I converted it a few days ago. And if you add twenty percent onto that, you get um, about six, eight, nine pounds. So it's sort of bob on. 
once you add the that's VAT. That's not too bad at all, is it? Yeah. I mean, cause, you know, especially because the the pound to dollar, um, the pound's quite quite weak at the moment, isn't it? I think it's like one point three five or something like that. You know, and it's normally up at one point five something, so it's quite a weak. So that's really good. Yeah. No, it's just really good. Like I say, the the shipping cost sounds like a bit of a sting, but uh, but I guess you know, there's a lot coming your way now, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. So because of that, I've had to buy a PC. Right. So I've been going through the, the minefield of uh, organising that as well over the last few days. Oh, you've had such a day, such a week. This sounds right. This sounds great. So, have you decided on your PC? Have you have you pulled the trigger? Yeah, I've pretty much done it. I've got it ordered. Um, so the spec that I've gone for is this is probably this is probably over specking as well for Vive. But I also want to do some, you know, really ultra settings gaming and just have a well a great pow- great powerful PC that'll last yeah, me for a while. Yeah. So I've gone for. Um, Skylake i7 6700K quad processor, um, which is, I think, one of the best processors you, processors you can get at the moment. Um, right. That's going to be water-cooled. 16 gig of RAM. I was going to have 32, but I was told it was complete overkill, and I didn't need that. Really, for for high-end gaming, you only need 8 at the moment, from what right. my research uh, led me to believe, but I got 16 anyway. Um, Solid-state drive. A small one for the operating system, two terabyte drive, uh, SATA um, for everything else, and a GTX, an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti um, as the icing on the cake. Um, and that's really, you know, in a nice zappy case and stuff. Um, but that's essentially the the PC setup that I've that I've managed to get. So yeah, it's a, it's been an expensive week. I mean, Vive came in at about it, it comes in at about nearly seven fifty with the shipping. Yes. Um, and I, I sort of earmarked about to fact make it all work for two grand. Mm-hmm. I'd be happy because I sort of wanted a PC anyway. Yes. Um, but my PC is ending up being about fourteen hundred, so it's coming in at twenty two hundred pounds altogether. So right. no more clothes, games, or food <laughs> for me. Or food <laughs> yeah. for the for, <laughs> for the foreseeable future. That's that's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm spent up, you know. Yes. So the PC, are you building that yourself, or is it going to be? Is it going to come pre-built? Well, I was going to, I was going to build it myself, but when I worked it out, I, I priced up all the parts using a great website called PC Part Picker, and right. what that does is it allows you to choose every component of your PC. It's also got a handy thing. I don't know if how if it's a hundred percent accurate, but it's got a compatibility checker on there. And if you pick something that's wrong or it's got a problem, it flags it up and says uh, you might want to check that you you should have a cooler with that CPU, for instance. Um, mm-hmm. Or it may mm-hmm. even say, "Oh, that won't fit in that case," you know, stuff like that. Or that RAM isn't compatible with that CPU. Right. So that's really handy. That takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Um, so I used that, and that showed every component. And it goes off on the net and scurries around and finds the cheapest that it can find for you. It checks all the big hitters like uh, Novatech and uh, Amazon um, overclockers, etc. So I was going to just get every component, and then I found a. A deal on Amazon from um, some guys, and they they do custom builds. So I thought I'd give them a call, and I just listed the spec, and it came out that it was only going to be like fifty pounds, seventy five pounds more for them to build it. Right. And I thought, and that meant that you know I'd just have them to send stuff to if uh, if something went wrong and things. So I thought for my time, because I haven't built one for a while, I'll uh, I'll let them do it. I'll let them do it. I thought, because it would take me a few hours to, to do it, and I just thought that was worth it. Um, but having said that, I'm sort of now, <laughs> I've gonna, I've sort of ordered it, but I haven't had my invoice, and I'm thinking I might cancel that and just get all the parts and do it myself because I feel that I'm missing out a little bit by not building it. So I'm, I'm, I have initiated and, and, and bought that PC custom build, but there's part of me that's thinking I'm still within time to cancel it. Um and get all the parts and do it myself. So I am kind of undecided now because as the days gone by, since since I sort of pulled the trigger on that purchase, I've uh, I've been thinking, hmm, I might miss mm. I might miss building it. But on the other hand, if it doesn't build like nicely and I'm spending hours and hours because there's a problem, then it's worth getting someone else to do it. You know what I mean? So I'm sort of up in the air about that. But either way, I'll be ready. They start to ship. The Vive starts to ship on the fifth of April. Um, I, I was led to believe it was the first, but they've announced when they launched it that it was the fifth. They will ship on the fifth, so I don't know whether I'll get it on the fifth or a few days after. 
I haven't I right. haven't had that uh, that shipping email yet. So yeah, that's that's been oh, that's been my week. Fantastic. That sounds like you say it's an expensive week, but it sounds a like really exciting week. The uh, kind of buying those kind of two things that you have been kind of waiting for. You know, this is your uh, belated fortieth birthday present, so you're yeah. like you know you're all in now. Yeah, I've been waiting like nearly a year since last May for this. I banked my fortieth birthday and thought I'd rather do this than just get something for the sake of it. So I've been looking forward to it, saving up for it, and I'm really excited about it. It's an investment in the future. I just yes. hope that uh, I hope it lives up to expectation. Oh, that just sounds so cool. That just sounds awesome. Can't yeah. wait. I can't wait to come over and play you now. <laughs> oh, mate, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. So what about your good self? Um, yeah, no, my week's been really good. Um, kind of techy. I've had SkyQ installed. So got ah, SkyQ yeah. got installed on um, on Tuesday. Um, so I think kind of day two of the Sky installs. They kind of they the guy who did mine. He'd done about three before. So at least he kind of got a few under his belt. Um, so that's kind of installed and working awesomely um i gave i gave nicola the the wife acceptance demo when she got home from work on uh, tuesday and it all worked swimmingly uh, so the <laughs> demo worked well so she was sold um there was it was quite quite interesting because i tweeted about how how amazing this is and how the the fluid viewing and and sky q interface just looks really nice i tweeted out to sky and they they kind of dm'd me and asked me a few questions you know and they were saying if you've got any feedback and like one piece of feedback i did have was that it's it's very hard to get to the planner you got to do lots of swishing to get to that so they was like oh you know thanks very much we'll take that on board and um, so which is really cool it's quite nice for sky just to kind of reach out and be able to i guess that's the power of twitter really but it's quite nice that uh, you were able to do that yeah, instant feedback. It is great that. Exactly, exactly. But you know, it was really cool. Um, like I say, the SkyQ works really well. It's kind of flowing around my house, um, and and it's fantastic. You know, you're downstairs in a movie room. You pause TV. You go up to the bedroom. That that's there in your my Q area. Um, so you're ready to kind of watch that from there, from where you left off. And and I did that demo from Nicholas, and we were like down in the down in the movie room. Did the pause when a couple of flights up in our house. Went to the bedroom. I went right now. Press this and it all worked i was like yeah oh, thank you you know because if it hadn't worked i'd have looked the right book um, <laughs> but it really worked it worked really well so yeah so sky q um using that loving that still getting used to it still getting used to all the kind of different interfaces and also even bigger than that yesterday um batman versus superman tickets went on sale Woo-hoo! got mine uh i did actually take a picture of the page i was like first in that showing so i'm going on the i'm going on good friday so on good friday easter friday um that's when it comes out i'm going to do the first imax showing at blue water and i can't wait i am just i can't believe it a i can't believe it's happening that we're actually going to have a batman versus superman movie um but b you know i just i just can't wait to see this movie i've only put one showing at the moment just because it's it, I've got a week off actually after Easter, um, but it's Nicola's birthday, and we're not sure what we're doing yet. So I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't book too many like I did with Star Wars. I just give it, I'll just uh, see you, see what I'm up to, and then go and see, maybe go and see it again. That's very conservative. Yes, absolutely. I felt I felt bad because I just literally I wanted to go right Friday, Sunday, but obviously Sunday is Easter Sunday, um, which is Nicola's birthday. Uh, so I, you know, I didn't want to book it then. But maybe you know you got the bank holiday Monday and the rest of the week, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best birthday present she will ever ever had. What's better than seeing Batfleck? And 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 just and Henry Cavill was Superman. You can't get any better than that. Nothing. And Gal Nothing. Gadot as Wonder Woman. I'm I'm so happy for about this movie, and I can't wait. Um, so yeah, so that's my week really. Kind of you know, Sky Q, Batman versus Superman doesn't get any better than that. Um, so uh, so what have you uh, what have you been playing this week? What have I been playing? I haven't had as much time to play as I'd like because I've been f- running around with Vive and with. Just working through what I'm going to get with a PC, for a PC um, and doing stuff to do with Movie Now, which is taking some time. Um, but yeah, what have I played? So I've played more Crypt of the Necrodancer. Um, you know, cheers, James, for telling me about this game because I love it. And the more I play it, the more I love it. It's brilliant. You know, it's it's a great replacement for Spelunky for me. So that's high praise indeed for the game. Yeah. Loving yeah. that game. Still playing it. It's been about three weeks now. Loving it. And I made a discovery of a new game that's not really that new anymore, but a new game for me. Um, so on Friday night, uh, I was playing Crypt of the Necrodancer, and I just thought, oh, you know what? I, I need to play something different. 
and I just fancied um, a racing game, and I got a hankering for Wipeout. Right. And I was thought, oh, yeah, what about that fast racing Neo game on the Wii U? And I was thinking, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. So I went onto my little Wii U and played the, went to the store and played the trailer, and I was, just, and I was thinking, that I've heard a lot of good things about this game. You know what, I'm going to get it. It was £10.99, and I just thought, you know what, it's Friday, I want some fun, I'm going to get it. So I downloaded it, and oh my goodness me, am I glad I did. Anthony, it's a fantastic game. It's Really? It's a fantastic game. Um, actually, I think it might have been Saturday night, but uh, regardless of which night it was, it's brilliant. I love it. Right. It's the new Wipeout that we never got. Oh, it's 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 excellent, and it's it's even got some. I consider some. The, the, there's got a gameplay mechanic in it that that makes it better. It's just so much fun. So it's a bit like Wipeout. Um, it doesn't look as probably as good um, and quite as clean lines as say Wipeout HD, Wipeout Fury from PS3 era, but it's got its own style and it does look very good and it runs really smooth. Really smooth. I'm sure it must be 60 FPS. Um, right. And it's very bright, very colourful. You know that wipeout sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you pick your uh, machine out of, I think you get about four to choose from. And then you've got three leagues. Um, and you unlock the levels by completing the races. So at first, you've just got the, I think it's called Subsonic League. Um, and you've got the first race available. And a choice of, say, three or four different hover machines, racing machines, to select from. And you progress by coming in the top three. So you can't... It, the rest, It's all locked down, and you can only unlock it by getting good, which right, I quite right. like. Um, but yeah, so you play it, and it's got the air brakes and stuff, like Wipeout, and you, you accelerate. But this is the genius of the game. On the track, there are sort of like ice and fire strips. They're really blue and sort of orange. Right. But I like to think of them as ice and fire. And they're boost pads, Okay. Mm-hmm. And you can change the phase of your craft from orange to ice, so sort of sort of fire ice, orange white. Okay, with a push of the button, a bit like a Karuga. Now, if you've ever played a Karuga, that bullet hell shoot 'em up. The screen fills with bullet bullets, and you can change the phase, the, the allegiance of your ship in that. And if you change white, the white bullets bullets don't hurt you, and if you go black, the black bullets don't hurt you. Right, and it's as if they borrowed something from that. And so you can change the phase of your ship and your allegiance. So you can change it to the white ship, or the, the sort of, I like to think of it as ice. And then if you hit the uh, the white boost pads, it boosts you. And these are long strips on the road, so you can as long as you can sort of navigate the corners and stick on the boost strip, you'll keep accelerating. Right, right. But if you're on the wrong colour and you hit, uh, so say if you were orange, if you were in, your ship was on the orange phase and you went on the white strip, then it would slow you down, like quite a bit. It'd proper slam the brakes on for you. Right. So you've got to be constantly looking for the strips on the road and changing the phase of your ship to hit those boosts with the right colour to to get in front. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And you also pick up orbs all the time on the tracks. They're, they're scattered around, and that builds up a, a boost meter as well that you can use separate to the strips. Yeah. And it's, it's called Fast Racing Neo, and my goodness me, it's fast racing. It is so fast, it's so smooth and fluid, it's brilliant. It's like, I, it's, I've been waiting for a game like this for so long, because the, for me, there's not been a racing game like this. There's been Mario Kart 8, but that's not, I always love futuristic racing games, and for, yeah, I haven't yeah. played one for ages, ages, well, since Wipeout Fury and Wipeout, well, Wipeout HD and then Wipeout Fury. And yeah, you know, if there's any listeners that love those sort of fast neon racing type games like Wipeout, and you've got a Wii U, I appreciate that having the Wii U probably drops down <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the the audience. But it's ten pounds ninety nine, and it's absolutely fantastic. It also supports local multiplayer um, right. and online as well, and it supports like all your different controllers. You can play it oh, with well, the uh, the nunchuck and, and and the Wii You can play it with the main controller. You can play it with the uh, the pro the pad pro controller. Yeah, the pro yeah. controller. Um, and it's a fantastic game. It's fantastic. I love it. So, how do you switch between different color pods? You steer with the left analog stick. You accelerate yeah. with I think A, um, yeah. and then the bottom at the, the top. I think that's a Y on the uh, on the Wii U. 
Yeah. Um, that's switch phase. So you just hit the button, and it just you could you could hit it as much as you want. It doesn't slow you down, and it's right. sort of like white, orange, white, orange, and you just so it's just a, the click of the button, or you can use um, a shoulder button as well. It gives you a shoulder button to do it if you prefer. And there's oh, also wow. a boost button that you can use when you've when you've built up enough boost as well. It's just really cool. It sounds that sounds like a really good game. Great arcade like- fun. It's really good. It's really fast. It's really it's just the music's cool, you know, and the way that it's delivered in five point one around you, it just gets mm-hmm. it's like ding 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 ding. I think that Wipeout over time got a bit sort of poncy with their music. <laughs> and <laughs> right. like I like I loved Wipeout twenty ninety seven with like Firestarter. This might yes. just show how, how how unclassy I am, but I was like, and I just turned all the other tunes off, and I just played the whole game with Firestarter because I loved it. Oh, there, there was something when you were playing Wipeout and Firestarter came in, you know, when it because it randomly selected the tracks, didn't it? Yeah. And when you when you got a game and you started hearing that song just kind of queuing up, yeah, boy, really? that was just you know that was good. That really got you going, yeah. didn't it? When you were racing with that, that yeah. was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. It was so good, and I found with Wipeout HD. When it came out, it, for well, it, it looked beautiful, but I thought that the, the music wasn't that. It wasn't so, doof, 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 you know. So it didn't drive me as much. It was more right. like I don't know what it was. Sort of the they'd gone too arty with their selection of dance music. For me, it didn't. It didn't get me hyper. It didn't get me in a racing mood. But this is. I don't think these are well-known tracks. It's just just tunes, and they're but they're good. They're good dancey tunes while you're racing around the track. And yeah, it's cool, you know, it's like three, two, hit the accelerator at two, and you get a boost, you know, like we all love. One, mm. pew, and it's just a great, great, bright, fast, beautifully smooth, exciting arcade game. So, if you have the means, I'd recommend it. Is, is it made by Nintendo, or is it just a an exclusive for, for Wii U? I think it's an exclusive for Wii U. Now, I wasn't sent the code, I just bought this game. Uh, myself, so I, I've actually forgotten what the developers call. Let me just check that out. Fast Racing Neo. It's an awesome game. Um, it gets oh, it's four out of five on Metacritic. That's interesting. And um, developer Shinen Multimedia. So Shinen. I might have to check that out on the weekend. That sounds like it could be could be fun for ten ninety nine. It's a bargain, man. And we could race. Yeah. We could race against each other as well. It'd be so cool. Or maybe we That's... can even race co op. I don't know. Or we can race online with everybody else. Oh, interesting! I have to remember my. Uh, I have to try and remember my Nintendo username, <laughs> my Nintendo name, because it's quite funny when we sign off at the end of the show and we give our kind of online uh, online usernames. We never seem to ha- never seem to mention Nintendo. So maybe maybe you will this week, Daz. And if anyone's listening, they can play Fast Racing Neo with you. <laughs> I don't know it. I don't know it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably it's probably wife and later, surely. I don't know what it is, but may- maybe next week. If we do it, if we do this. Yeah, I'll, we'll do it next week. But I think if if even if you don't buy it, if you've just watched a YouTube video, if you if you type in Fast Racing Neo uh, on Google, one, two, three, four, five down, you've got a YouTube video of twelve minutes of Fast Racing Neo. I think if you watch that, you'll just uh, you'll be sold. Yeah, you'll be sold. And I, I I I just watched a little trailer, but I was I was so in the mood for a racing game and. A little bit like the Vive, but to a much lesser scale. I was thinking, oh no, I hope this game's alright when it was downloading. And yeah, it's just, it's a great game. Great fun game, yeah. You know, no need to invest hours and hours and hours. Well, you could do, because it's good fun. But you know, you can just have a quick go. It's great. Fantastic. Sounds amazing. It is good. It's good. So uh, that's it for me. What about you? Um, well, I've been playing. Um, I played Walking Dead, um, Sean. Um, so that came out last week. Uh, I think you know, when we were recording the pod, that came out. Um, so Walking Dead, Sean, episode one, played that, finished that, really enjoyed it. Had a fantastic opening. Um, Telltale seemed to be nailing the openings at the moment because. Um, the Borderlands one, the even the Minecraft one that I wasn't sold on, but even that had a, you know, they kind of give you a little bit of gameplay, and then they click to an opening, great soundtrack, you know, really good visuals, and the Michonne one was potentially my favourite, you know, so good that I actually replayed it just so I could show Nicola how, how cool it was. Um, it's it's very um there's lots obviously as you would expect with Michonne she has a great big uh, sword um so it's very there's lots of that there's lots of sword play lots of quick time events in it um really like it quite like the story it's very good I was I was really happy when uh, we finished the first episode I was really satisfied with it 
could have done with the other two because it's just such a great story. I was like, oh, is that it? You know, when you get that final achievement for completing episode one, I was like, oh, you know, I was a bit like, oh, I want to play more. I want to play more. So it was really good. So um, that's Walking Dead Michonne, uh, episode one. I think episode two comes out in April. Sounds good. Are you ever tempted with these? Because you know what it's like when you get, you know you're going to get to the end and be like, oh, you ever tempted to just wait for a few episodes so you don't have to wait at the end of the first one for a few months? Oh, absolutely. I did that with The the Walking Dead, the very first season. I, I did that with that. I, I kind of stumbled over it or I kind of gave it some attention when um, it had already been completed on the Xbox. And so I managed to just, one Christmas, play through the entire thing. You know, I said the same with Life is Strange. Um, but oh, it's just so painful waiting for them. You know, I, I think from kind of, it must have been from that onwards. Because Wolf Among Us, I was just waiting and waiting. I think with... Um, Game of Thrones, I had the last two episodes back to back, and that was good fun. But but it was quite nice to just kind of played it, finished it, and then kind of moved on, uh, waiting for that next one. So that after that, I've been playing a lot of Rocket League. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Rocket League on on the uh, on the Xbox on the Xbox One. Um, really enjoying it. Really getting You're into getting it. You're getting good there. I'm getting okay. It's quite funny actually because um, I, I tried to have a quick go at lunchtime today. I kind of had like kind of really kind of annoying meeting and then I thought right I'm going to go downstairs I'm just going to just have have some lunch I was working from home have some lunch I'll have a game of Rocket League and I found that kind of jumping into one game just isn't enough you know I kind of I think I need a couple of games to warm up and then once I've had a couple of games you know I'm kind of jumping all over the place scoring goals and and I just you know it was great just to have a quick one go at lunchtime but I definitely think I'm kind of need need about two games to warm up and then I'm and then I'm better get, but, get your eye in yeah, exactly. Get everything, kind of everything working. I'm going to continue playing it next week on the 8th. So it'll be next Tuesday. Uh, we get the Batman DLC. So we get that Batman versus Superman Batmobile in uh, Rocket League. So which I'm definitely jumping into <laughs> uh, to get that. So, you know, the Rocket League DLC is only about £1.59 or something like that. So kind of two $2.50 or something. So it's not that expensive just to kind of add some something different um, to to your uh, to your to, to your Rocket League roster, so yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it. You know, it's such a shame I didn't get involved when there was a whole PlayStation. Um, you know, when it was on the PS Plus, it's a shame I didn't get hooked as hooked as I am now um, because I feel like I've missed out a bit. But I'm enjoying playing on Rocket League, and like I say, the great thing about it is because everyone on Xbox is kind of you know kind of leveling up with you. Um, you don't feel like you're, you're too overwhelmed at the moment. Yeah, that's nice. But you know, the, the minute you sort of slack off, everybody the line raises, doesn't it? It does indeed. It does indeed. So I guess you know. And also, um, I've been playing. I've been playing some of the seasons just so I can unlock things because um, I'm trying to unlock the um, Halo. Um, car as well not that i'll need it when the batmobile comes out but um i've been trying to unlock that so i've been playing some seasons which is you know which is great but when you do go into an online match you know sometimes there are some really good guys yeah i bet there are i bet there are i I haven't played it for ages um on my ps4 but it's there it's there and uh i might go to it because at the moment like as you know i'm just playing little sort of little uh, tiny attention games um, yes. So I could have another go because I did hugely enjoy it. You know, it's a great game. But I bet I'm rubbish. But I don't think I ever even played a multiplayer game. <laughs> just played, right. just played against the computer. But yeah, yeah no, I good. mean that's good. I mean the, the computer's really good. You know, playing the seasons. You know, to unlock the armadillo, I played it on rookie. I've kind of knocked that up a notch now. And you know, and I'm still kind of winning their tighter games. You know, like fourth. Four two, four three, you know, but it's uh, it, it's it's good fun, you know. I'm just absolutely loving it. Um, another game I played this evening, just before the pod, um, I thought I'd just have a quick look, um, because I fired up my PlayStation Four, I thought I'd have a quick look, um, at the game. Is Broforce? Whoa. Or should I, or should I say Broforce? <laughs> you know, it's just like I, I'm so hyped about this game, but I put it in caps in our show running notes. Um, this game is awesome. I, I tell you, I apologise for writing this game off when we were going through the PS Plus um, lineup last uh, last week. 
I was a bit like, meh, bro force, but this game is great fun. It's a side scrolling uh, shoot 'em up that um, great kind of 16 bit kind of retro graphics. Um, you have you have these little areas that you have to clear. Um, it's all very easy at the moment. Like I say, I've only been playing it. I only played it for about half an hour this evening. Um, oh, but what fun! You know, you kind of unlock all these different. There's like bro. There was, was it kind of bro harder? You know, there was, there was bro a baracus. You know, there's all these characters and it is just so much fun. It's colorful. It's fun. It's, um, it's actually four player co op as well. Um, so you can actually, we could play together and just kind of jump around. It's kind of, like I say, at the moment, it's not very taxing, but the great thing about it is you've got to obviously go from left to right through the level, but in order to kind of maybe go up or, or, or get to a place, you can actually start just blowing away the um, the environment. Uh-huh. So you've got this rock face, so instead of climbing up, you can actually just blow through the rock face and kind of make your own way up it. And it's just, it's so much fun. The soundtrack is amazing. Um, so with every every time you get to a checkpoint, you have to, you kind of go through and you kind of like, you uh, raise an American flag. You know, it kind of feels almost like Team America type <laughs> thing. You know, it's just very... Um, uh, it's just so cool. I was like I say, I just had half an hour on it. I definitely want to play some more. Um, but it's just really cool. It's just such a great game, and, I, and like I say, I, I don't think I gave it the um, the credit it deserves. But we didn't, we didn't well, know, exactly. did we? We never played it. it just, no. They just appear, these games appear out of the blue, and we're like, well, what's that? We did actually. I mean, I voted for it in the in the PS voting uh, because it looked like the best one out of the three, and I'm so glad I did because it's just like so much fun. My only gripe, my only gripe, is that it's not on Vita. Um, I I was of course the moment I kind of was playing this and it's side scrolling, 16 bit graphics. I thought this will be great on the Vita, um, and but unfortunately it's not. So it's uh, I think there was a Vita version planned, but that got canned um, at the start of the year. Uh, but this is just great fun, but. Uh, uh, so yeah, so Broforce, it's free at the moment on the uh, PlayStation Plus, free all for all of March. Um, came out yesterday and it's free. Definitely download it and give it a try. Yeah, it makes me think your your description of a sort of HD Grizor with with destructible environments that that everybody loves destructible environments. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it looks a bit like uh, Super Time Force. You know, it looks kind of yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, I, I know, know what you mean. It, yeah. It's just, and like I say, the soundtrack's great. Right at the end, you get to the end of, you clear the levels, a helicopter comes in, you know, you jump on the helicopter. It's like an 80s action movie, you know, it has, it has, it has Rambo, it has B.A. Barack, it has like uh, Bruce Willis or their likeness, you know, it has Dolph Lundgren. It's just, it's so cool. I just want to play more. I just want to play more. I don't want to play it. Sort of like the, the well. Expendables game. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly what I thought. Oh, well, this is this is exactly what it is. It's like a a sixteen bit Expendables game. Demon. Who <laughs> wouldn't have fun with that? Eh? Yeah, exactly. It's really sure. good. Worth worth checking out. I'll be interested to see what it's like two player. Um, we should maybe what we should try and do is try and like book out an evening where we could play some co op games and we could do like uh, fast racing Neo and we could do Bro Force and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so. that's good. Yeah, we should do that. Maybe we'll do it at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. And then the last game, the last game. Um, damn you, Rare. Damn you, <laughs> Rare did um, last week was Viva Pinata Week. <laughs> um, so last week was Viva Pinata Week, as you would Go have seen for. from from my awesome T-shirt that I was wearing um, on our live stream. I just thought that was a personal um, thing that you were having a, your own Viva Pinata Week. I have a Viva Pinata life. <laughs> yeah, every week's <laughs> so, Viva Pinata Week at the Chesson House. Indeed. Home. It was so funny because I um I was listening to um this shows how sad I am and I apologize for this. Just 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 kind of give me this just two minutes. I was playing some Viva Pinata music um uh, on from YouTube, like Rare could tweeted out a link that was, you know, here's listen to this, it's the soundtrack to Viva Pinata and I was played it and I I rang Nicola up or Nicola rang me and I answered the phone and I didn't mute my laptop or I didn't mute my iMac and she was like, Are you playing Viva Pinata? Like this. <laughs> it was like she she got it straight away as well. You know, you you can tell you've married the right lady when she kind of gets it straight away. But so Rare had a live stream. They had a live stream um, showing kind of the, the going through the levels of Viva Pinata. You know, James was there kind of doing his thing with Viva Pinata. And I was watching it from the hotel room, um, the hotel room that I was in in Manchester last week. And I was like, oh, I really want to play it. And then there was lots of stuff coming from Rare um, all week about Viva Pinata. And it got to Sunday. 
and I was kind of feeling a bit lazy, did lots of DL ones as they feeling a bit lazy, and I thought, do you know what? There's one achievement that I want to get on Viva Pinata, Trouble in Paradise. And it's quite a big achievement. I have to unlock everything. So it's kind of going through all of the stuff and, and just kind of filling out my encyclopedia, my, my Viva Pinata MP, encyclopedia, where I, I've got some missing. So I just started playing Viva Pinata. I just sat there and I just, oh God, it's just so good. You know, it's like you can get the rare replay collection for like 15 19 pounds in the uk um just as cheap in the us i'm sure and viva pinata trouble in paradise was just the perfect game to play on sunday i just sat there i think i was there for about two and a half three hours just playing viva pinata just loving every moment of it and just enjoying it again you know and just kind of ticking off those things i need to tick off and Nicola came downstairs to the movie room and saw me playing it. She was like, oh, where's your spreadsheet? Because like, that's how sad we normally are. We normally have like a spreadsheet of all the different all the different variants and, and all of the different uh, colours that you could do for the, the big pinatas. And I was like, oh, no, I'm just, just playing it by... Um, I'm just kind of playing it uh, loose and I'm just going to just... I know what I need to get. And she was kind of like shrugged and like, if, if that's the way you want to live, you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> like, like, what's going on? She walks out, she's like, Tony's, ne- Tony's oh, never played it like that before. I wonder what's yeah, going exactly. on. He's having, he's having a breakdown. <laughs> I can't, I can't live like this. This ad hoc malarkey with the Viva Pinata. But no, I played Viva Pinata in Trouble, uh, Trouble in Paradise, and it just, it's like an old friend. You know, it's like playing it. It's just, yeah, like, just a mellow just game. You, can, you just enjoy. It is, it is. I was, I was doing, you know, a certain animal, and I was just, I was getting my fudge hogs going. <laughs> and I was just, I was just enjoying, just kind of doing all of the things that you need to do with Fever Pinata. And I just, I bloody love it. It's just such a great game. Um, so yeah, so I've still got more to do with that, and I'm just going to do more of that kind of like on on downtime. I just wish that was on a a tablet or a an iPad or, or a mobile device because I'd just be playing that, you know, whenever I was traveling. Yeah, it suited it well as well the interface, wouldn't it? You know. It's- could be it, touchy and you scroll with your finger it'd work well absolutely i think you know a kind of almost a top down but then you can go into 3d on an ipad you know it would work really well they brought it out once on um on the ds there was a ds version of viva pinata called pocket paradise oh, wow. um and that was really cool that was great you know it was very it was a scaled down version i think you know if you watch the if you watch the behind the scenes on uh, rare replay you will you'll see that they actually started off as a uh, microsoft handheld they had viva pinata on there but then they kind of realized that this was something special and uh, and then evolved it onto the xbox it grew from there oh wow it it did indeed. So let's let's stop me talking about Viva Pinata. Let's start with the uh, let's start with the news section. Um, and in this week's news section, we have lots of new game and hardware announcements. Um, both the PS4 and the Xbox One are getting system updates, and then we have a lot of news from that HD yeah, the HDV Vive uh, pre-order. So Daz, first piece of news <laughs> is with you. So, yeah, I get all excited about Viva Pinata. First piece of news is with you, sir. Yeah, the first piece of news is with myself. And that's there's been some big rumours about the Nintendo NX um, over the last few days. Um, Dual Pixels reports that they had a chat with a guy who's, um, well, a mole, if you like, or a, or a, a guy who leaks information. Um, the guy oh. that has told them this NX stuff has been correct before um, with, with many things. Um, for instance, he was right um, about that there would be a Pokemon game that utilised a full 3D engine, um, which was Pokemon X and Y. Um, he said that older Pokemon would get new abilities and forms, which was Mewtwo. He said that the PS4 would be capable of producing modern-day graphics on a DirectX 11 level, like Unreal 4 and Frostbite 2, and then Unreal 4 was demoed during the PS4 release, um, and many right. other things. So he's, he's been right. He, he also um, announced the rumour about the Illumi room early, said that Microsoft are going to you know plan that. I think when that came out as a rumour, it was him. Um, his name's Gino, G-E-N-O. I'm sure that's not his real name. Um, so... Anyway, he's contacted uh, Dual Pixels and he's given them information about NX rumours or information that he believes is uh, is true about the NX. And judging by his past form, it's probably wise to uh, take it that it could well be uh, pretty close to the truth. So um, th- some of the information is, he says he doesn't have um, lots of details about the device itself, but he's got some background on the way it's going to work. Um this is quite interesting what he said. He said that a lot of the stuff that 
has gone into this the system was outlined yeah. by um, Iwata, the late Iwata, before he's passed away. And right. in the company, um, what, the NX is considered the, the last project of, of Iwata. So um, I didn't know that at all. Um, and that when they have meetings and brainstorming meetings, at the end of it, they say in Japanese, I can't, I can't say the Japanese, but at the end of it, they say, for, Iwa- for Iwata, at the end. Like, sort of, so right. that it's very much in the spirit of, uh, of his legacy, this oh, console, wow. which wow. is very touching, you know. It makes me mm, sort of want to mm. get on board just because of that, because I think that's very beautiful. Um, and so he also says that Nintendo is highly motivated in delivering the system. Um, a quote he said from an I- internal employee was that they have not seen this much forward momentum on a project since they launched the original Famicom. Um, Famicom being the... Japanese name for the Nintendo. So the original Nintendo, the NES. So that's pretty cool. Um, so he goes on to say some hardware information. So allegedly, <clears throat> it's going to have a wireless HDMI dongle that attaches flush to the back of the device. You can pull it out and insert it into any display with a normal sized HDMI. HDMI. Right. And the device is going to use an evolved version of the Wii U's streaming tech to display... In HD on that screen. So that's quite interesting. Um, mm-hmm. The analog controls are going to have full haptic feedback. So if you hit a wall with the character, the sticks will move away from the direction that you're running at to simulate like running headfirst into it. So they'd actually push back against your thumbs, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow, that's quite yeah. cool. I quite like yeah. that. So not just a rumble, but an actual push against you. Um, yeah, yeah, that's quite yeah, nice. And like it says, when so for instance, if you were, if you were firing a gun or moving over rough terrain, there'd be more than just that vibration that we get at the moment. It's like proper, an advanced haptic um, effects going to be used on the pad. It's wow. going to use Bluetooth sync with everything, especially smartphones and tablets, to the point where one feature is that it can answer phone calls and display text messages from your phone onto the screens itself, so you don't have to stop what you're doing on the game to answer your smart device, which is quite cool. Genius. Yeah. Do you know what? I was playing the uh, Xbox One the other day, and I thought, why Why isn't there, like, Twitter integration? You know, when you're... I mean, maybe some people, like, when I'm playing games, I want to be kind of shut off from that. But, you know, if you get mentioned or you get kind of, you know, someone kind of is trying to talk to you on Twitter, you know, you're just play, playing your Xbox, and it just pops up in the top. And so that's, that's really cool. I quite yeah, like, like that. like a friend coming on. On the Xbox, like that blade, you know, it's bink. Yes, someone just mentioned yeah, it. You would. could, and you could select it if you wanted to, or just let it let it fade. Indeed, they had Twitter integration in the Xbox 360, um, but I think you had to go to it. I think it was more of an app. Uh, they had like Twitter and Facebook integration, but I'd love that. You know, if you go, um, like I say, someone kind of did an app reply or something like that, you just saw that. You know, you can just. I know you got your phone right next to you, but it's just quite nice having that on the screen. Yeah, isn't it, it just keeps you focused on on that platform, doesn't it? I suppose. Um, and Gino also says the closest in terms of power it gets is to the Xbox One, which that's this thing that disappointed me a little bit. I was expecting, as we, I've talked to you before about, that they would actually. I was hoping that it'd be more powerful than PS4 um, because of technology getting cheaper and, and better as time goes on. Um, but he goes on to say that an app idea for it is like this is a. I think the tra- I think this is a translation. It gets a bit sketchy, but. He says an app idea is Wii U times 50 and PlayStation Vita times 100. So the key is that all the tech is exactly the same hardware layout as the PS4 and Xbox One, which then combine it with the OS's strong emulation functions. And it's got a really good compiler, which means that any game that can run on a PS4 or Xbox One can run easily on the NX, with next to no modification from the original source code. Well, that's fantastic for like third parties. Yeah, it just isn't means it? they're just you know, they're just going to be everything that's out can just be converted to the NX easily. Wow, you know that's really good for like Ubisoft, EA, Activision, and things like that, so they can get behind that exactly. And you see, you, you hit it right on the head there because that's what he goes on to say. That's why Nintendo has been so late. Because if you heard the people moaning, there's been a few third mm. parties saying, "Oh, it's not good enough." The Nintendo aren't giving us any dev kits. This could be a reason why they're not so keen to give them out yet because they don't have to because they know it's going to be so easy 
Yes. Well, by all accounts, um, uh, last week when they had the Dice um, Talks and the Dice Awards, uh, Reggie Fields of A was there, and he gave a talk about um, about Nintendo, about what they're doing, etc. And and the rumours were that the moment he came off stage, you know, devs just surrounded him, you know, and it was almost like you know, where's our yeah, kit? Type thing. I think. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, people are are eager to get hold of this yeah. kit. He said that one third party dev that I presume has had a, a dev kit because some I think I think some people have got them. Um, it's the easiest device we've ever developed for. You just take your code, compile it, and it works. So wow. it could have the best of everything. Um, and the final thing that he said, he said f- uh, about social features, and he said so if you look at Pokemon Go to get the idea of the type of social features that will be on the NX. It's going to take multiplayer, AR, and street pass concepts to a whole new level. Um, And it's going to be really easy to use. Uh, Developers have described more than once that it visually and functionally looks as if, and uh, I don't know if you you might be able to visualise this better than me or, or our listeners may, as if Samsung and the Nintendo 2DS had a baby. In that it looks friendly, but unlike what most people visualise a Nintendo device to look like. Right. Uh, the okay. operating system's going to so be that's... called Nintendo S. That's a cool name, isn't it? Nintendo cool. S. Nintendo OS. Yes. Um, yeah, and it's very powerful. It's got loads of modern features of the mobile operating systems today, and Nintendo's going to try have to be very careful in showing it off because they're scared that it could easily be mistaken as just running Android. Um it's also got a very strong networking functionality built in, um, and it ties into multiple devices and services, which is going to allow a very competent and pervasive ecosystem designed to constantly involve the consumers' lives. Wow. There you go. I wow. mean, again, you know, it's all rumour, but this guy has got a, a track record of being right, you know, pretty much all the time. Exactly. I mean, there's always some of that stuff that might fall by the way. You know, I remember when Xbox 360 was coming out and they were saying that, you know, you'd be able to design T-shirts for this game, you know, and then just kind of sell them to people or, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, you kind of take take all of that as they're conceptual, but, you know, the meat of what you've just said there sounds like a really good console. Yeah. You know, it sounds like a really good gaming machine. I, I really hope that that's out this year. Um, it would just be fantastic. You know, it just needs it just needs one or two kind of killer titles and and that could just be it'd be such a great concept yeah and if it is as easy to compile for as they say then it could have all the big hits straight away you know it could just come out with with everything that's that's out on either system well you know pending negotiations they might, they might not be able to get exclusives off uh, sony or microsoft but multi-platforms you know it could just have them all straight away it's just they just all yeah. come out and that that could be why these financial um, um, these financial predictions, these financial predictions that we've been reading about, about that they're, they're sort of all said that, like, yeah, Nintendo's going to come out very soon. We didn't know why, but then that argument kind of explains it, you know. It makes it feasible, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. So, yeah, there you go. Interesting. Can't wait. Hopefully, you know, we're not that far from E3, so hopefully at E3 we're going to get um, get a reveal of, of yeah. NX. And maybe, you know, maybe this is contrived anyway. Maybe the, this guy is sort of works for Nintendo and they just do it because it raises, you know, it's nice to, it's nice to have a rumour because they don't have to commit, but they can put, they can sort of ha- hold their finger out in the wind and see what happens, can't they, with the rumours. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. See, we'll see what people are biting. We'll see which one of those features people are going. Oh, I wouldn't mind a bit of that. Yeah, so, or the internet's up in arms saying we don't want that, and they think, oh, okay, maybe not. Yeah, we don't want social features. What are you doing? Putting Twitter yeah. on there. I mean, I'd rather they <laughs> that guy from the Lost Sparks. He's mad. He's mad. I say. Yeah, I was going to say I'd rather that they sort of didn't do all that. Jiggery poker just made it really, 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 really powerful. Um, but it's fun that rules, and it's games that rule. Fun games. That's where the Wii's missed out, the Wii U, you know. There's not been much on it. Um, so, Absolutely, but when they have made a game, you know, you look at Mario Kart, you know, you look at Mario Kart, I've said time and time again, that game is stunning. You know, that game is absolutely stunning, you know, and it's just so, you know, and that's on a that's on a less powerful console than the Xbox and PlayStation yeah, 4, yeah. so it's, you know, don't, um, don't rule them out. They might be able to do some good stuff under the yeah, hood. It's all about, yeah, it's all about the fun. I mean... Uh, Mario Kart 8 is a thing of beauty. Uh, I play on my on my Wii U, Mario Kart 8, uh, Mario 3D World, Bayonetta 2, and now uh, 
Fast Racing Neo. Fast Racing Neo. And that, that's pretty much it. But, you know, that's that's good fun. They're, they're also quality. It's just that on previous generations, we've been used to a little bit more than that. I've been used to more than four games on a console's lifetime. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know. That's the disappointment. But this is sounding like, this is what I'm saying. It's like, all right, who cares about the power? Let's just forget about that. If they can bring out a load of fun games and there's actually going to be that support and third-party support there, all, all the better. No, absolutely, absolutely, and that's what you want. You know, we want a whole bevy of first-party titles and also some backing. You know, I'm, you know, we've already got our go-to consoles for those third parties, but it's nice. Um, you know, we have to think that there are people where that that console will be their only console, so it's quite nice that they're 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 getting all of the all of the big games. You know, the games that that Sony kind of you know banked last year on um, were kind of all third-party. So, so yeah, no, that sounds good. And then speaking of kind of first and third party, kind of really bad segue, but there you go. Uh, Microsoft had a showcase uh, event. They had a spring showcase event uh, this week, or I think it was last week in San Francisco. And one of the things that came out, uh, especially kind of interesting for me as a bit of a a bit of a Forza fan, uh, one of the things that came out was that Forza Motorsport Six. Apex was announced for PC. So Forza Motorsport 6 Apex is coming to PC. Uh, Traitors! Tra- it should only be on Xbox One. What are they doing? <laughs> it's insane. Uh, it's, Burn effigies. It's, it's quite funny because you know there wasn't that much hater. You know there wasn't much, that much hate coming from this, which was interesting. You know, oh, that's quite, good, maybe maybe because Quantum Break got all of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everyone, they were all exhausted ago. after that. Um, so so uh, it's coming to PC. It's going to be free to play. So they're doing a it's an exclusive pc uh, game it's free to play there will of course be optional microtransactions which allow people to purchase vehicles or you can also earn the vehicles by winning events so uh, it's going to feature 12 themed racing events it's going to have more than 60 cars and it's also going to have a new objective system you know a skill based system so which is quite interesting so it's definitely feels like a scaled down uh, uh, version of Forza, uh, but it's coming to PC. It's also going to include driver tars as well. So the driver tars, which is uh, the the kind of great um, kind of it learns how you race and then it then pitches you in other people's racing. That's going to happen as well. So that's coming to it as well. So they, even though they've scaled it down, they're still bringing that kind of cool uh, feature that uh, Forza have, which is the power of the cloud. They've got that driver tar. So that's coming, but it's going to be free to play. It's also going to be running in 4K as well. So they said that the graphics option will allow um, up to 4K. Um, they actually announced they've got Gears of War as well, and that's going to be 4K as well. They really were. There's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of PC uh, based stuff coming out of this Microsoft Showcase event. Um, so, like I say, they've got you know they now have Quantum Break, they've got Gears of War, they've got Forza Motorsports Apex. You know, all of those will all be running in 4k wow wow they're really working on uh, unifying it all aren't they they really are they really are kind of working on that kind of yeah that unified uh, thing so it's it's very interesting um lots more stuff kind of came out of that uh, microsoft event but they that was kind of the biggest uh, one of the biggest stories definitely for me uh, was that there's uh so yeah we've got some others a bit later but from games that's about it i think you also there was also some quantum break stuff as well yeah yeah i mean um I've got some quantum break news. I don't know if it was announced at the same event, right? Uh, but it may have done. I should think anything of Microsoft that came out this week because I think the embargo list lifted at about um, Tuesday, and uh, and it was only like a, there was a handful of American press that were there, um, kind of covering this event. And uh, Phil gave a bit of a speech, and then they kind of got to play hands on with um, with some great games. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so Quantum Break is apparently full of Alan Wake Easter eggs. Oh. Which you'll like. Yes. Um, now, I started reading this, and I had to stop. This is uh, reported by Polygon, and I had to stop reading it because it mentioned that there's, like, really massive spoilers for Alan Wake, and I've never played Alan Wake, and I don't know if I will, um, but I might, so I stopped reading it. But, for instance, it says in one of the first sequences... In Quantum Break, you're on a university campus where things start to f- go wrong. Um, and you you go into a building where, if you stop and examine the scenery, you get different Easter eggs that are all about Alan Wake. Oh, so, they, for instance, the guys at Polygon, they uh, examined some steam- scenery. They went in and stumbled into a lecture hall. And they saw a blackboard that's covered with frantic scribblings all about Alan Wake. So, it's as if... 
a university lecturer is uh, is making some kind of theories about Alan Wake, the the, the, the video game character. No, so he's not, he's not he's not sort of like writing about Alan Wake the game. He's writing about Alan Wake the you know the, the fictional character. He's an author, isn't he? He is game. indeed. Yes, he's a troubled author. Yeah, yeah. And so there's all this stuff on this blackboard all about Alan Wake. I don't know how Alan Wake plays out as if it's one of those games that you can sort of like, you know, theorise about and hypothesise about what's going on in it. Um, but it looks like they're sort of adding that sort of thing to look back at the game. And maybe, maybe they'll, maybe they're in the same universe. Maybe they're going to sort of link somehow. That'd be um, really cool. That'd be fantastic. Because we've obviously got Alan's Wake Return coming as well, haven't we? Yes, yes. And you get all of, you know, it would explain why we're getting all that free Alan Wake uh, backwards compatible titles as well uh, when you pre order Quantum Break, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then it, it says basically that the next uh, thing that they talk about is a massive spoiler for a pretty incredible piece of Alan Wake fan service. So at that point, I stopped reading. Right. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't talk about it on the pod even if I had read it. So what I'll do there, if, if you're interested in finding out more, um, I'll put the Polygon link in the show notes, and you can have a quick read of that. Because huh. you've, you've done it, haven't you? So you, you'd be okay to read it. I have indeed. I've played the first Alan Wake. I played the DLC. Didn't play American Nightmare. Uh, I think that's what I was talking about last week, which is why I'm going to download this um, so I can get to play that, um, that game, because that was the one I didn't get to play because there was other stuff that was out. But that looks like, yeah, that looks a ton of fun. Yeah, so it looks like they're making quite a bit of interesting uh, sort of syn- Fantastic. synergy I'm, between those. I'm quite excited about Quantum Break. I'm quite excited about. It. I'm getting. I'm. Get, I saw some. Uh, I saw some gameplay footage uh, that was fresh from this uh, Microsoft event, and it's looking quite good. It's looking. It's looking interesting. I'm definitely going to. Uh, I'm definitely going to uh, download it. Yeah, I'm not that excited about it. I just think it's a. Just see, it looks to me like another cover shooter. Yes, yeah, no, indeed, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, it, uh, one of the things, one of the things that worried me was it could be a bit like the order, you know, 1886. Oh, no, it can't be that, it can't be like that. Yeah, like, yeah, great Microsoft, Microsoft have got to bring out their own order, 1886, to rival the Sony exclusive Yornathon. No, it won't be that bad. I think it's probably going to be pretty good. I, I estimate it 7 out of 10, but I want it to be better. But I just, I don't know, I've not got that feeling I got when Gears of War was coming, you know what I mean? For all the hype. Yes. For all the hype, I haven't got that same thing. But And also something that I was wondering what was happening with, and, and we've had an announcement to explain it a little bit more, is you remember when they said at E3 that it's going to be like based around a live-action show, TV show? Indeed, yeah. It's interspersed, I think. After a bit of the game, you get to kind of then watch a live-action TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's been yeah. Th- this is this is my next little little bit of news on it. Um, so the remedy have said that yeah, after each episode of the game, you then get to watch an episode of a live action TV drama. But and, and I was always like, well, how does that work? It's so weird because you know when they said it was going to be like a TV show, I was kind of well, how's that work? Because if they air it at this time, you know, well, me and you may be a different bits of the game. You know, so I think it's really cool that you you finish your bit of the game and then you watch the show. Yes, and it's sort of tailored as well as just watching the show at that point, which is, I think, clever mm-hmm. because that that solves that whole thing that I was like, "What's that about?" Because I was just thinking like really dumb about terrestrial TV. They just show it at a certain time, and yes. you'd be expected to be up to that point. Um, but as well as that, everybody is going to get to watch it after they've completed their little bit or, you know, each episode. And there's some choices in the episodes and depending on the choices you make will influence the show that you get to watch. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I thought it was just you get to a point and then it just kind of forwards the story on like a like a really kind of expensive cutscene. Um, yeah, that's all. No, it's it, it, the show that you'll get to watch, and this actually makes me get pretty hyped for the game, to be honest, the decisions you make in the game, the way that you play the game, when mm-hmm. you finish the episode, that has made variations in what you're going to watch as your TV show. And they've got about 40 different variations of the show in total, wow. where your choices in the game make it evolve and change, whether it's from a junction choice or one of these things in the game called Quantum Ripples. Um, and they basically unlock like deleted scenes within the show, or they don't unlock them. So the length of the show will change depending on your decisions in the episode. I so am super everybody's not going to watch the same you know we're not all going to have the same experience. We're not, I mean obviously in a game you make different decisions because 
because you do. That's the nature of a game. But never before had I even imagined that the episodes could be like a choose your own adventure book, you know, pieced together from your actions in the game and then stitched and then you get your sort of personalised version of the live show based on your actions within that episode. That's great, isn't it? That's awesome. I so, am yeah. super hyped about that now. That's really cool. That's now, really good. That that apparently weighs up to be a lot of video. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, and so their solution is that as a native solution, you won't download those. You will um, they'll stream it, which for me, I think that's fine. I think that makes sense so that you yes. save hard drive space. It'd be nothing more frustrating than if you're nearly at the end of your hard drive space and all of a sudden everything breaks down because the episode fills up your drive too much. So it's going to stream. Um, on the Windows 10 version, It's going to they're going to go right up to 4K. Right. 1080p on Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um, on, on Xbox One, I think you'll have a choice that you, you can download the whole, the episode if you want to. But the native thing is it's going to be uh, it's going to be streamed. But for me, that the the fact that it's going to be bespoke to the player, not just the game, not just the experience of the episode, but the live action being tailored to your experience. I just think that's cool. That's really cool. When it first was announced, I was like, "Well, how are they going to do that?" Just with you know. Everyone's going to either get it spoiled, or people are going to be like waiting for the episode. And they've solved that by it's a, it, it, you get it played to yourself. It's not like this TV, TV, TV thing. It's going to be streamed to you when you when you finish the episode personally. But not only that, but yeah, I know I'm sort of like, I'm going on about it a bit. But yeah, it's tailored to your gaming experience, and I just think that's so cool. That's just fantastic, you know. And, and it's funny because it's funny because I stayed away from. From from Quantum Break, you know, from all of the coverage, because I was like, "Yep, I like this. I like the idea. I like the live action stuff. I'm good. You know, I'm sold. Check. When can I play it?" And I've stayed away from it. I haven't read anything, but knowing that kind of just make and it's quite nice for you to tell me that because then I'm not kind of getting into that spoiler territory. I'm just finding out this cool new fun, and I can't wait to play this now. That yeah. sounds, just talking about that's got me yeah. more a lot more excited about the game. Honestly, actually. that sounds fantastic, and, and you know, and it makes sense that it's going to be streamed because it's got to work out what it needs to show you um, based on your decisions, based on your choices, and then and then download. Oh God, I can't wait for this. About a month away, isn't it? About a month away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's got some big names in the game and the show as well. Well, you know. it has Sean Ashmore. It's got Littlefinger from uh, Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, I love, I love it when Littlefinger's in it. It's got uh, the black guy from The Wire. Um, yes, you know, Littlefinger was in The Wire as well. Actually, it's a little Wire, <laughs> the Wire reunion. That chap was also in The Fringe as well. Sean yeah. Ashmore was uh, yeah. Ice Man, wasn't he? He was. Uh, yeah. So you know, it, hopefully, it's good actors. Maybe it will be good. I like I like a good story game, mate. So yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It sounds like a really good kind of narrative driven, uh, especially if that's it. Oh, fantastic, superb! Can't wait for that. So that's the end of March, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's like the twenty fifth or something. It might be just before Batman versus Superman. I can play that over the Easter weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so can't wait. Um, right next up is with me. Um, the Life is Strange developer, um, Don't Nod, have um, released some information about their next game. So I said, you know, after I finished Life is Strange, I was blown away. You know, Don't Nod were now on my radar. You know, they are, they're the, they're a studio um, that I'm going to kind of keep an eye on. And they have brought out, um, they brought out some, some information on their next game. Their next game is going to be called Vampire. Um, and it puts you in command of a military veteran called Jonathan Reed, and it takes you back to London, 1980. So the First First World War has just ended, the second is kind of yet to begin, and Spanish flu is gripping London. So this is kind of setting the scene. Oh, 1918. 1918. I yes. thought you said 1980 for a minute. No, no. So it's it's all day glow, wham, are oh, number one, <laughs> and Spanish flu. That's what I was no, thinking. It's 1918. <laughs> um, so and it's all kind of dark. It's gloomy lit London. Looks amazing. So they've showed some screenshots. They showed some kind of concept art, and they were just talking us through kind of what it is. So what they're saying is they're saying that it's action focused combat. There's a skill tree based leveling up system, and also they have the kind of narrative decisions and consequences of uh, Life is Strange. So for me, this is almost kind of 
it's 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 amalgamating Remember Me, which was their other title, and Life is Strange, and then setting it in a 1918 Victorian time... Uh, is that Victorian time? Victorian time London. Um, and it just looks very good. You know, it looks very interesting. Very kind of downtrodden um, environments. Everything's kind of low lit. It just looks really interesting now this game you know i can get kind of excited about it don't nod i'm definitely kind of keeping an eye on it but uh it's not due out until 2017 so this was just a very first kind of have a look at this take a look at this and uh, the demo the gameplay demo that that is available and I'll stick a link to this article. Um, it's actually an article by IGN. Um, I'll stick a link in, the, in our notes. It just kind of takes you around a poverty-stricken white chapel. Um, so it's kind of around that um, area. And it just looks it looks very good. Yeah. I mean, we love Don't Nod. And it's just such a stark contrast, isn't it, to Life is Strange, which well, I like. Absolutely. Did you ever play Remember Me? No, I didn't. See, I remember it being. I remember it being. I remember it coming out. I remember it being released, and I've always thought it was a bit like a Deus Ex kind of game. Um, but it's uh, so yeah. So it is. It you're right. You know, it's you know, this isn't teen angst in a high school. You know, this is this is uh, Spanish flu in London. So. It sounds a bit like maybe they because I haven't I haven't read this story on purpose because I like to just hear things from you. Mm. Um, it made me think that they were going to try and fuse their own sort of bloodborne into it. Yes, yeah. I mean, it does look. It looks like kind of that dank. You know, they're saying it's beautifully a, bleak. Beautifully bleak. There you go. That is a perfect way. And they say it's a semi-open world with hub environments, kind of a unifying a like connected zones throughout London. So you've probably got like central London, like say Whitechapel, etc. So it looks very interesting. I'm definitely it's definitely kind of piqued my interest. But like I say, they say that Vampire the game won't be out until 2017. And this isn't this is not an episodic game by the sound of it. No, no, it's not. It's just a, a full title, a bit of, like I say, very, very uh, kind of similar to Remember Me. Yeah. Um, so, and it's just you know, like I say, it looks like they when they take you through it. Like I say, I'll put a link to the show notes. When they take you through the demo, you get to see some of the character models. Um, it's just very interesting. The concept teaser. It's only about kind of minute, minute and a half. Um, it's very interesting just seeing some of the the character models and stuff. So it's. It's very, uh, it, it looks very good. Yeah, I mean, usually I'd moan about it, you know, an announcement so far in advance, but these guys, they've had some success. We're all fans. I don't, I don't know anybody that couldn't like Life is Strange, and it's like they're harnessing that this success, and it, it strikes me that maybe they're taking on a, like a more ambitious project with this, and every every look to them. Yeah, absolutely. It definitely sounds like um, you know, like you say, you're you're right. You know, they're they're at high at the moment. They've got our interest, so why not just say, "Well, this is what we're doing next," and then yeah. maybe we're getting some concept now. Maybe we might even see some gameplay, some proper gameplay at E3 um, later on in the year. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah, cool. Well, the next piece of news, news is with myself, and that is about E3. <laughs> so that is almost a segue, um, and it's. I don't know, I was going to say bad news really uh, EA have left E3 Activision are going to skip E3 as well Activision are skipping? Yeah, yeah, they're not going to have a stand at E3 Wow yeah. Wow so it's, I mean this has happened This happened before, didn't it in uh, 2007 and 8 you got a lot of big hitters just sort of abandoning E3 and then they came back it all came back, didn't it, and E3 was, it was hardly, it was going to be cancelled wasn't it, or, you know, it's hardly a, it was hardly an affair, really. It seems like this has gone full cycle, and big big publishers are, uh, are standing off again. But does that mean because like Activision, obviously they have Call of Duty? You know, I mean, I know they're there now. You know, last year, previously they were with uh, Microsoft, weren't they? They always opened the Microsoft event, but last year we saw them very much in the Sony camp. So, do you think that Activision are just happy to kind of give those those titles to the to Sony and Microsoft? Yeah, I mean that's a good point. It's like why should they bother spending all the money on having their own stand or their own show when really they can just ride on the coattails of Sony or Microsoft, can't they? Mm. And that's no real detriment to themselves. Um, they've said that they'll be on stage at Sony's event with Call of Duty, but nothing else. Right, right. And they're not going to have... I mean, uh, you know, Bethesda are going to have their own event, aren't they? EA are going to have their own event. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Are, are Activision not, going to have their own not, one? Not that they've announced yet anyway, no. 
Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I know. It's it's weird. Who's going to be next? If if anybody. I keep thinking that the reason that these people can't get in is maybe because Nintendo. My, in my kind of in my head, Nintendo have just like bought out a complete floor, and they're going to be like just showing so much stuff. But I don't think that's that's going to be the case. But that's kind of what I have in my kind of little my little kind of. Uh, positive world that i live in <laughs> Give me your little uh, N- nintendo heart <laughs> yeah uh, but then i mean activision i've got that much to show us no you know more skylanders it's call of duty and skylanders it's hardly Destiny. a conference is it i guess yeah. you know i guess but there's you not know. there's not a sequel there's not a no. sequel expected is there no but they could show de- a bit of destiny 2 that's going to due out next year we've got an expansion but yeah you're right you know all of that stuff you know you could put destiny could be also with sony so you could just give those you know then yeah. just all it's, that's left is guitar hero and uh and uh, skylanders yeah it's just small small potatoes really so they can just wheel that out at sony and microsoft's things why why bother doing it themselves i suppose i suppose that's what they've decided indeed yeah Interesting, interesting. I wonder who else, if if anyone else will, uh, I wonder if anyone else will will do it as well. They're dropping like flies. E3's cancelled. <laughs> no, don't say that. It's my favourite weekend, favourite week of the year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> next to Christmas and my birthday. Oh, uh, man after my own heart. <laughs> uh, right, next up is with me. Um, next up is with me, and we have um, some system software update news. Very exciting. Very exciting. Um, so. PlayStation have announced that uh, PS4 um, system update, so PS4 3.5 uh, system software update, is going to be um, releasing in beta. The beta goes live today. Um, and actually, just before I was recording this show, I was just updating my PlayStation 4 um, with the beta app. Um, so it's quite nice. You get a, I got a code um, from Sony. I then downloaded an app, then went into the settings and was able to then just kind of download the beta i think you know it's quite interesting uh it's quite interesting Daz, because what they'll do is if it starts messing up your games you can remove it you know so you won't have any of that nxoe um <laughs> disaster that you had with the uh, guitar hero oh that's nice you know an instant remove would be nice because i mean rem- i remember when i did it with my nxoe it was as if they'd like put it into a new ou with an active directory or something so it took like 24 to 48 hours to replicate it might have even been three days before I, it went back to normal, oh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Um, no, it did. It did leave you without it for a while, didn't it? It did, and it, it was bad because that was the game I wanted to play. Yes, you know, it, yes. it, it was. It was a real travesty for me. Uh, obviously, it's all. It's all. It, it's kind of okay now. It's still a bit buggy, I find. Um, yeah. Rock band, right? Yeah, I still have to start it with the pad. I can't start the game with the guitar. So that's just that's just rock band, is it? And needs an update by the yeah, sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so PS4 3.5, it's out in beta. Um, so it's coming to uh, for those who have been um, selected and are in the beta. Um, we're getting it now. Like I say, mine's downloading right now. Uh, for everyone else, it will be coming out very soon. Um, some of the features that are coming to 3.5, some some nice little features that we're getting. We're getting friend online notification. Now this I like because you are you know you're deep. In, you're deep into Metal Gear or The Witness, and you know, and you've you've scheduled to play with someone, and you don't know that they're online until you know they maybe they text you, or you know you don't want to disturb them because they're engaged. But this way, you get a friend online notification, similar to if you're on Xbox, um, so it will pop up just to let you know that that friend has just signed into the PlayStation Network. So that's really cool. Notifications can be tailored to certain groups, certain friends, exactly the same as uh, again over on Xbox. You can, if you want to appear incognito, you can now appear offline. So if you just want to play that game and you don't want to be bugged, you can appear offline if you want. Um, you can also, there is a user scheduled event, so you can now organise game sessions. So they've added the ability to add game sessions with your friends. So when the event starts, anyone who's registered to play that event will be automatically added to a party and that game will start playing. So which I thought was quite a nice little feature. I thought it was quite cool. So you can say, right, Thursday we're all playing X game and then you can then set that up and then everyone who says you know accepts that invite will then uh, automatically will then just be pulled into that party and then you can start playing your game yeah I like that. that's a nice feature and the notifications one is uh, a long time coming but it sounds like they've, they've done it right 
Indeed, indeed. So we've got um, Daily Motion is now a new service partner in the share feature. Um, so the Daily Motion uh, website. So you can now kind of add that. And then also, one of the features that I know a lot of people who I talk to are quite excited about, and that's Remote Play. So Remote Play using PC and Mac. So this is bringing the PS4 Remote Play to Windows PCs and Mac. Um, this feature's not available in the beta but it's coming very soon so you'll have an app on your mac you'll have an app on your pc and it just allows you to do that that remote play um streaming so which is quite interesting that is interesting cool cool i i don't really think that gets used that much but every it seems to be something that's required now um so yeah it's good it's good it's good that they're uh keep updating the system that friends thing though it's just should have been it should have been at launch Oh, absolutely! It should have been the launch. You know, well, did did you get friends notification on PlayStation Three? Oh my goodness, man! You're asking me now. I, I just really don't know if it even was there. Um, but no, but it's interesting about the remote play because, like, uh, one of my friends uh, I talk to a lot about, kind of, he's he's a PlayStation Four uh, player, which is my, my mate Kenny, and he, um, you know, he, there's one TV. He lives in a house with uh, he's got his two daughters and his wife, and you know, so he, the the time for the main TV, you know, is is kind of lessened and lessened. So f- for him to be able to then go off to his office and you know get play on the Mac and play his uh, PS4, you know, that's an absolute bonus. You know, that's a really, a really good feature. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great reason to use it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely. You know, I think, oh, you know, we're spoiled because I've, I've got, you know, I've yeah, got like a, to deli- TV, a I've got a dedicated TVs. room with my TV, you know, and Nicholas got a TV or other, you know, so it's, we're not fighting <laughs> for it. But if you are, it's just a really good feature. So I was quite impressed yeah. that that is, that's coming out. Yeah. And for the, you know, if you've got the kids and they're, they're moaning about it, you can say, go off then and play it on the PC. Because we're going to watch, yes. you know, Mum's going to watch Coronation Street or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it is a good feature. I, sh- I shouldn't have dismissed it. So that's so that's um, so that's the three point five on PlayStation uh, PlayStation Four over on Xbox One Land. Um, a another preview came out, and this kind of hit my console last night. My console automatically turned on, installed, and then turned back off again, which was quite a nice little feature. Um, so this way, we're getting so what's new on the Xbox One preview is we can now purchase Xbox three hundred and sixty backwards compatible uh, games on the Xbox One. Oh, nice. So this one that's brilliant so that's now so before you had to go to xbox.com didn't yeah, you yeah and buy it from and the then, web shop yeah and then buy it that way so now you can now do that all from the dash so those games with gold games that came out this this month so we've got supreme commander uh, supreme commander 2 i can now just from my dash i can then just go buy and it will just download one stop shop which is what xbox one is all about Exactly. Yeah. And then, so we've also got Party Chat is now in Twitch broadcasts because before, if you were broadcasting on Twitch on your Xbox One, uh, only the person who was uh, signed in um, was the was the the only voice that people could hear if they were watching that Twitch broadcast. Now on Xbox One, and this is only on Xbox One, um, you can now hear all party members. Now, if you've got a couple of shy party members, they can opt out of including their audio in that uh, Twitch broadcast. So if you just say, you know, there's actually an option. So when you go into the party and your party is broadcasting on Twitch, there's a little option which is says, include my audio. And then you can then kind of opt in or opt out of uh, of including your audio on Twitch. That's really cool. That's really cool. I really like that. You know, you could hear the real the real furore as a, as a game of Rocket League is going on if it's being streamed. That's re- that's really nice. Absolutely. Some more changes. We've also got output um, party chat can now go out to the headset and speakers simultaneously. Um, so you can have it on your headset, and you can ah. also everyone else in the room. That's also available as well. That's my number one thing. I love that. I was waiting for so long for that to happen on PS4. It happened a few months ago because uh, Claire's usually with me when I'm playing games and if I'm having a chat, if me and you are playing and if we're chatting, I find it that I'm ignorant if Claire can't hear your good self. So on Xbox 360, I always had it coming out of both the TV and the earphones together or just out of the TV. And um, you couldn't do it on these consoles until not long ago on the PS4. And I'm so pleased to hear that they're doing that on Xbox now. It's strange because there was... They sort of perfected the UI on the Xbox 360, 
and it still amazes me the amount of features that were missed off on the Xbox One. That we're, I think we're probably up there now. I think we're I think we're getting pretty much there. But isn't it surprising it's taken two years? It really is. It really is. There was a lot of features that they either couldn't include or didn't think were valuable. And then because of that XboxFeedback.com, they're kind of slowly putting all of these features back in. Yeah, that's really cool. And then the other good thing uh, I read about, just while you talked about backwards compatibility, a little personal gem that uh, has reappeared, um, is Geometry Wars. Yes. Yeah, that came, yes, indeed. Yeah, because I when I uh, did my beta trial for an XOE, it had the um, backwards compatibility games, and Geometry Wars was there, and I enjoyed playing it because I loved that game. And I was playing it and playing it and playing it. And then when it became live, Geometry Wars disappeared. And I was on the internet looking, but no one cares about Geometry Wars, so I couldn't find any information about it. Um, and then I read the other day that that's, that's actually been released now, so um, I need to get that because I really like it. I've, there's one achievement I've got left to get. Right. to get, get a million points, I think it is, without losing a man. It's wow. the last achievement I've got to get on that game. And um, it's one that still burns me that I haven't got it, so uh, I may be undertaking that. That's it's so interesting. Yeah, though that's really good that it's come back, so you can kind of yeah, do it. You can torture yourself, Daz, now on the Xbox One. Yeah, I can get angry. <laughs> I can get angry all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. And then the last, um, the last piece of kind of. Uh, feature that's, that's that's now out um for preview is that you can now track achievement pro- uh, process in the xbox one guide now the xbox one guide is that guide that pops out from the left when uh, when you hit kind of the home button and then you go over to the left where you normally have your friends and your party notifications there's now a little trophy halfway down and that's your achievements if you're playing a game it actually goes oh you're playing rocket league i'll show you your achievements and it shows you your achievements that you're about to get it's tracking your achievements and it, one of the interesting things is it also tracks them in real time so it shows you in like a brightly colored line how many achievements or how close you are to that achievement how much uh, you've progressed since the last time you looked at that achievement so if there's something where you've got to win 30 games in rocket league it just shows you since the last time you looked at that you've won 10 more and it just shows you that percentage that's so a that's nice touch it really is. It's quite nice. I quite like it being there because I tried it. I tried it today when when it downloaded. I tried it. That's when I was playing Rocket League uh, at lunchtime. Uh, I just had a quick quick look at the achievements, and it was because I had Rocket League playing. It was like here's your Rocket League achievements, and I was like, that's really nice. I like that because I do like kind of especially those statistic ones where you got to get X amount of whatever. Um, it's quite nice to see those. I mean, the, one of the great features of the Xbox One is that it now tracks all of the achievements so if you've got to get you know a thousand kills in a game to get an achievement you know how close you are to to unlocking that achievement and now you're getting this kind of almost uh real-time tracker for achievements cool yeah nice updates so yeah, so there's also some stuff that that came out to the there's also some stuff that came out for the Xbox app as well. Um, but I'll put a link to a major Nelson article, and then you can have a look at that. Oh, one thing while we're talking about achievements, your backwards compatible Xbox 360 achievements now appear in your activity feed as well. So where before, if you played a backwards compatible game, you unlocked an achievement, you didn't see it, it didn't pop on your Xbox, but now on your Xbox One, but now it does, and it's now in your activity feed. Excellent, excellent. They're all over the achievements. Yes, absolutely. So that's kind of you know that's kind of you know a, a nice little refresh to both PlayStation Four and also to uh, Xbox One. Yeah, bringing the ne- the the current gen in line with the old gen. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed, and then just kind of one of the last things, um, one of the last things, one of my last news articles is about um, the Xbox One. Now, Phil Spencer at this um, showcase event, he had an interview where he was talking about Xbox One's future and also talking about upgrades as well. And it's quite interesting because he was saying, and I kind of quote, and this was an article that was on Polygon. Um, he said, "Consoles lock the." hardware and 
software platforms together. There's a quote from Phil. Um, at the beginning of the generation. And then you ride that generation out for seven years or so. Um, he said, when you look at the console space, I believe we will see even more hardware innovations in the console space than we've ever seen. You'll actually see us come out with new hardware capability during a generation, allowing the same games to run backwards and forwards compatibility because we have a universal Windows application running on top of that. So I just thought that it it goes on to, and I'll put a link to the Polygon interview because it's a really interesting read, Um, but it's quite interesting. Are we going to get an Xbox One hardware upgrade? Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting this, and he's talking about yeah, unifying PC and Xbox One gaming into one ecosystem that they're going to call the Universal Window Application. Yeah. Um, and that's going to run on top of the UWP, which is the Universal Windows Platform. Which, oh, I love it when you come out with acronyms. <clears throat> yeah, man. The UWA and the UWP. Um, and that's going to allow the same app to run on PC, Xbox, tablets, and smartphones. So we've mm. talked about this before, that, that Microsoft's been talking more and more about unifying everything. Um, yes. And this is... This is that coming to fruition, isn't it? So you're gonna, they're gonna have this unified Windows platform. So it's kind of like the Xbox might change its name to some, to maybe become more Windowsy at some point. Maybe they'll, because they'll call it an Xbox, but maybe they'll call the UI, the the Windows application or something like that. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah. you'll, maybe that'll be one app on it. Maybe that. Yeah, be absolutely. I mean, it's really interesting because it's really interesting because you know I've always hoped for. We didn't get it when this came, but you know, obviously, you know, everyone knows that I'm, I'm kind of love 4K. I love that HDR, and I was always hoping that maybe we would get that bump. You know, does that mean we might get with this kind of universal Windows apps on Xbox One? Might we might get a kind of X point, Xbox One point five that is capable of running 4K? You know, a lot of the, as I said earlier, you know, a lot of those games that we're seeing uh, coming for the PC are all running in 4K. You know, so could we get uh, an Xbox that that will be able to run a 4K? Yeah, and it's as if like Phil's saying that. It's sort of gone. It's archaic in his, in his opinion or Microsoft's opinion now. The way that consoles work, that they sort of deadlock for, for seven years. So let's just say it's seven years. Yeah. Um, and don't evolve. Whereas, for instance, with your uh, Apple devices, you get iterative upgrades, so you hardly notice it um, because it's constantly evolving yearly with regular updates, isn't it? Mm, so mm. it's as if they're moving to maybe or suggesting that they may move to that sort of model. I kind of like the seven-year thing because you're locked in and then you do see such a difference when the next one comes out and I like that. I like to be, even though there's an expectation that it never gets hit anymore it's because of the uh, sort of uh, diminishing returns law. But I don't know, it's as if they're suggesting, yeah, that you could, you could just bolt on an extra bit and then all the Xboxes will be better. And it makes me think that if they had this in the pipeline, if this was always the plan, why they may have been happy to release the Xbox at the spec it was released at. Because they didn't say anything at the time, but you know, behind the scenes they knew that they were going to say maybe add modular hardware upgrades to its lifespan. So the X- they saw the Xbox One not as a seven-year console, but maybe they see it as a lot longer, and they saw it as being an upgradable device that would not only, say, in time meet, say, PS4, but overtake it. Yes, with yeah, with it with iterative upgrades, and maybe so they were kind of like, yeah, it's it's not at the same spec now, but but and every, and they're sort of laughing at everyone on the internet, going, ah, they're saying, yeah, but you don't know, it's going to be, it's going to not only meet, but it's going to overtake because we're going we're going to play this game different, we're going to change it. I don't know how I feel about it, really. Um, so, do you think that you would though? So, the Xbox that's under your TV right now, do you think there'll be an add-on to that, or do you think that you would have to trade that one in and get a, a you know, an X point, Xbox One Point Five? I'm not sure how they'd do it. I mean, maybe there's yeah. a port at the back that you could add some extra stuff to, <laughs> similar to that memory port on the N64. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was just, <laughs> I was just racking my brains then trying to think if there's any port on there that an unknown port on the Xbox. But do you know what I mean? It's just. It, it defies convention of console. It defies console convention. This is a uh, very left field. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, for, judging from kind of what I read from like there from from Phil's uh, statement, 
even if you have a kind of Xbox One, um, the Elite One, or the one that we have right now, um, you're still going to be able to play all the great games. But what you're getting to is, like you say, almost a PC culture, where those people that maybe buy this Xbox One Point Five enables you to that is then the console that enables you to chop and change components and and kind of get better and better. You know, for me, if they said here's an Xbox, it plays 4K games, um, I, I'd be all over. You know, then if they're further down the line, they said, "Here's an Xbox. You can now add this, and you can play Oculus." Because um, obviously they're partnering partnering with Oculus. I'd be all over that as well. So it's 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 interesting. I'm I'm. I, it's quite interesting to see Phil coming out with that, especially after all of the backlash that they got from Quantum Break. Um, but it also kind of shows maybe the way that Microsoft are, are going. Yeah, it's like. You spend extra money, you get a different iteration, or you get a modular upgrade to your box. You can play it in, say, Ultra, if we're going on PC or 4K. But the games can all be played right back to the Xbox One anyway, if you've got the original, but you just don't get all those bells and whistles. It's, yeah. It, it's interesting. And that that's sort of... I think they had to do that. I mean, because I bet the heat was starting to, like... The temperature was going up with the, with the hate, saying, yeah, you can't do this because, like, you know, we won't be able to play these because that can't run it. And so he's he's he's, insta- he's said that and he's covered himself there, but it's kind of like who's going to want the basic one? Mm. But maybe some people will, you know. Not, so maybe some people will be happy with that. They they don't they don't want to spend whatever it would cost, and they can still have basically the same experience, still have the same playability for the most part. Um, on say the, you know what we've got now, um, and they're not bothered about having everything you know up to uh, up to eleven. Mm. But yeah, it'll be interesting how they do it. It's. I don't know how I feel about it. Part of me thinks it's a good thing. Part of me, it, it's probably just because it, it defies. Like I say, it just sort of defies what I'm used to with console generations, and and that feels a bit. It's a big change, isn't it? That that's a big change. It, it really is. I mean, Microsoft always have these events, so this wasn't a this wasn't a scheduled event to try and you know put this news out there so we could then all just kind of digest it and and get used to it. But they always have these showcase events, so it's quite interesting that they did say what they were. You know, did Phil did say what he what he said in the Polygon uh, article? But it makes for a very interesting E three um, conference, doesn't it? Yeah, he's just sick of backlash from everything he says, so he's just said, look. We're unifying it all. I mean, now, now you know, there's not going to be any backlash, is there? Because you, you've got to expect sort of any Microsoft game. You can expect that there's a good chance that it's going to come out on everything, PC and Xbox. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and versions you know, on their surfaces or on the, you know, whatever. Hmm. Mm, indeed, you know, I, you know, we've said time and time before. You know, Phil knows what he's doing. You know, in Phil we trust. Um, so that'd I be a good T-shirt. He, yeah, exactly. You know, but you know, in Phil we trust, and I just think that he knows what he's doing. And as long as I can play my games um, on a, on an Xbox, you know, I don't, I don't care. You know, I don't care that Quantum Break is out on a PC and looks shinier and look can be played in 4K. I'm interested in playing Gears of War in 4K because uh, because the the Ultimate Edition looks so good on my Xbox One, but. Um, but that's a big outlay, you know. That's getting into the realms of PC, uh, as you found out this week. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't like the. I always thought a console we were all everyone's a big happy group with the same thing, and we're all locked in. And I kind of like that. I don't like mm. the the haves and the have nots and the de- the divisiveness that it could cause. But it'll all depend on the way they execute it, and it's all just speculation at the moment. So we'll see what happens. You know, yes. it's, it's could could well be a good thing, but I reserve judgment until we see. Actually, how it's gonna how it's gonna roll? I think you know more, more great games over a wider <coughs> horizon means more people give more people access to play means more money comes in to the industry, which means more innovation, more good games, and the cycle goes on. So, absolutely, when you look I at mean, it like that, what's the harm in it? Indeed, indeed. I mean, it will be interesting to see such a big change if this comes mid console life because we always used to that smaller thinner um, console aren't we you know that always happens in both PS4 and Xbox but to see to see maybe that the kind of the the midway mark changes the landscape yeah like an Xbox but, One S yes sort of thing yeah and I don't know how I'd feel about that because I'd want it but it would have to be enough of a change to to justify making that change unless they did some kind of part exchange thing 
But if you think about it, you know, you've now bought a very powerful PC. So if there was a game that you wanted to play in 4K, you know, once, you know, later on, once you got a 4K screen or whatever, if there was a game that you wanted to play in 4K, you just play it on PC. Yeah. Still getting, still getting achievements. You're still signed into Xbox Live. I don't want to leave changes. consoles, though. Is it, I didn't know <laughs> that I was going to abandon everything when I made this but, move. But it, this is terrible. But it won't feel like it because you'll still be signed onto Xbox Live. You'll still get achievements. You'll still be playing with an Xbox pad. I'll still be in the lounge. You're still in there. It's just, you know, every now and then you'll get a blue screen. Interesting. And it'll mean that maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe now I'll get, I'll get a blue screen. But I'll feel exactly the same, except I'll be on Ultra compared to the, the and I'll be having all that, that whole Xbox experience, but at, at a higher frame rate and a higher resolution. And Shinier so, graphics. Yeah, and so will anybody that's paid for the upgrades. But also, people that can't afford that can still come in at an entry level and still enjoy it as well. So it's, 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 it kind of sounds quite good. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll settle for that. So next up, last piece of news is with you, sir. Oh yeah. So this is my games release news galore section. Hooray! Uh, it's just that I saw the. Lo- You're just after a jingle, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> games release news galore. Da, 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 da. Um, and it's just that I, I saw loads of little announcements, and I thought I can't do these one by one. So let's just put them all into the the, the, the same thing. It shouldn't take long. Um, so. This is just for my own good, rather than anybody else's, because I wasn't up to date on this information. Um, so, Mass Effect Andromeda um, is not going to be out this year. It's expected to be out in quarter one, 2017, after uh, an EA uh, financial guy, their chief financial officer, Blake Jorgensen, um, said during a Morgan Stanley conference that we've got a great year ahead. Uh, we've got Battlefield coming out in the third quarter and our third party title that Respawn our partner built um, which is Titanfall 2 we've got Mirror's Edge Catalyst which is coming out very soon the first quarter and then we've got Mass Effect Andromeda which is a sci-fi action game in our fourth quarter and EA's fourth quarter is the first quarter of next year apparently so wow. we're looking at March so that's okay I'm, I'm not distraught by that I'm looking forward to Mass Effect Andromeda but the lo- for me, the longer it takes, the better it's going to be, I sort of think. Yes, yeah, it is kind of, that's kind of one of the games where you're kind of like, you know, in the realms of take all the time you need. Yeah, definitely. Just And I want to savour that, and I'm happy to wait to savour it. So that's good for me. I'm happy with that. It's a shame, because that was my big game this year. Was it like you what, know, your Christmas was, game or something, you mean? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of when I was looking at the landscape thinking, you know, what's coming out? You know, that was the big game for me. You know, that was... Um, that. I mean, obviously, we've got Gears of War. Um, we've got Gears of War 4 coming out. But that was kind of Mass Effect Andromeda was my kind of long-form game that I was quite excited about. Yeah. But like I say, I'd rather have it... I'd rather have it working perfectly than have it now when it's... Uh, um, and, and it's not up to scratch. I'm sure I knew this, but I'm going to lean on your knowledge, mate. Here, uh, is it? Are they doing? The, are they doing it as a trilogy, or is it just going to be a standalone game? I think they start. I think they said they're starting another trilogy. Cool. Now, interestingly, and and very, uh, and you might kind of you know doubt my gaming prowess slightly uh, by by saying this, but interestingly, does that mean that maybe they will be bringing out a remastered collection of Mass Effect this year? Well, if they didn't bring out a remastered one, why the heck not just bring it out on backwards compatibility? Exactly, but that would give me the the chance of playing uh, Mass Effect 3 because I never finished it. Oh, mate. Yeah. But did you do all your saves to the cloud on 1 and 2? Well, I still have my Xbox. Oh, you're alright then. Yeah, um, yeah, that that would be really cool. I I completed it and I was happy with the ending. <laughs> Lots of people weren't. I was all right with it. Uh, no, um, so I wouldn't go through them again. But yeah, that would be that would be great. How far did you get three Mass Effect three before you, you you got distracted? Not long at all. Oh, good. So you get the whole game. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I would definitely restart. I would definitely restart Mass Effect three. Um, uh, I probably shouldn't admit this, but Mass Effect one, I wasn't that mad keen on. You know, wasn't that's that fair enough. It, impressed with mass effect 2 loved it you know absolutely loved it i was just really uh, i think we were playing it at the same time um, and i just absolutely was just blown away by it you know finished that finished my story was just really was kind of so i, w- I wouldn't mind you know if they updated that give it 1080p um kind of 60 frames kind of give that a nice little shiny i would i'd happily play that uh play those again yeah yeah absolutely and i mean ea they're a big, you know, they're a big hitter 
they surely would have some influence with Microsoft and it would do wonders for the marketing of Andromeda. So I wouldn't be surprised if they hadn't requested it. And it just makes sense, doesn't it? And oh, I sort of envy you to play 3. I enjoyed 3 a lot. I think 2 is probably the best one, though. Um, yeah, though 2 was amazing. The cover base shooting and the whole kind of squad was just absolutely fantastic. I mean, obviously, I think, was it was it Peter Moore who said that they wouldn't do it? They wouldn't do remakes? Or they, he made some statement, didn't he? Um, but I could see definitely, you know, this, this, is, this is worthy of a HD collection. Yeah, but the thing is, with backwards compatibility, they can sort of, like, circumvent the remake thing. And they say, well, it's just mm-hmm. backwards compatibility, isn't it? It wouldn't be available on PlayStation. Was it ever? Was it a, was it Xbox exclusive? No, well, um, Mass Effect 1 was Xbox exclusive. That's wasn't right, it? yeah, then, yeah. And then they had that. And yeah. then they brought 2 and 3, and then they remastered 1, didn't they, for the PlayStation? Yeah, yeah. Very good games. Really enjoyed my time in that universe with uh, Commander Shepard. Aha, uh-huh, yeah, brilliant. A lot of people say that when they introduced the Fem Shep, it, she was a much better actress, voice actress, than the, than the guy. Right. And like, but I know I just stuck with the guy. Really, I tried to make him look like me. It didn't work. He looked stupid. <laughs> Maybe that's just what I look like. But uh, yeah, he just it just didn't work. <laughs> it just didn't look as cool as the default. I should have just left it alone. But um, yeah, I really love that game. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, and so also, No Man's Sky was accidentally listed for pre-order on the PlayStation blog. So it flashed up on the PlayStation blog um, briefly. Saying that pre-orders would start on the third of March, which at time of recording is tomorrow. I got so excited when I saw this. I thought it was going to be released tomorrow. <laughs> wow! You know, it was just when you started. It was really funny. Suddenly, No Man's Sky started to trend on Twitter, and it was like three three. And I'm like, "What is happening?" Yeah, I mean, it I thought like, three three. I was like, "What? I can't, I'm buying that tomorrow, <laughs> am I?" I got really excited. <laughs> I'm logging into work, taking a day off, you know, <laughs> requesting a holiday. Yeah, getting your calendar <laughs> sorted, shifting everything around. <laughs> yeah, moving meetings to Friday. Yeah, it was just like... uh, and it also popped up on Amazon.com as well. Oh, did it? Yeah, but it's not there now. Right. Well, the picture's there, but it says unavailable. Wow. So, yeah, that, that was a digital version of the game. It was listed as uh, being at $59.99. Right. Um, That's a big title. It's a big title. So, But it was removed... But if the date's right, it may appear tomorrow. Just for pre-order? Yeah, it may be that tomorrow it appears for pre-order. Right, right. For whenever, And if you pre-order it, now you might help, you'll be able to help me here with your digital uh, download expertise, because I know you do that quite a lot. When you, mm-hmm. or when, Because you pre-order digital downloads as well, don't you? I do indeed. Does it always give you a date of release when you do that? Or do digital downloads appear that you can pre-order with no date? Of release, most of them give you a date. Most of them will give you a date of when that goes live. Most of them say, you know, goes goes live one minute after midnight on X date. You know, that's currently happening at the moment with the division. And do they take your cash yeah. as soon as you pre-order, or do they wait until release? Takes your cash straight away. Does it? Yes. Oh, that's harsh. So that so I've ha- I've already I've already paid for the division. I'm just waiting for Tuesday for it to unlock. Yeah, but you know when it comes out. The thing is that I'm getting out there is it'd be I'd find it hard to part with my money today or tomorrow. Say say it says pre-order No Man's Sky for whatever the equivalent in pounds is at forty nine ninety nine. Um, but not knowing when I'm going to get it, you know, it's like here's fifty quid, and that's I'm just going to give you that fifty quid for as long as it takes you to give me the game. Though I suppose I've done that with Shenmue back in Shenmue. Maybe that's the same. I was just about to <laughs> say that. Say? That's exactly what you did with Shenmue. Yeah, yeah. Here's my money. But I, I may get a game. But then they, they, you know, they got they got you Suzuki out at E3 and it made it all brilliant. So that's why I did it. I said I got sucked in. <laughs> The reason why I like it is just because, you know, like I say, with the division, um, it's going to download. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it, the download is, I don't know if it's already downloaded to my machine. Sometimes I think with, I think it was Halo, you kind of, you, you pre-ordered, but then you waited and then it downloaded it a bit later. Um, you know, so you got that gold version of the, of the game. Uh, but I just love that it's just sitting there waiting. You know, when, when, um, Rare Replay came out, I was sitting there at you know one minute past midnight and it just unlocked you know it turned from wait to play the game halo 5 did the same it's just quite nice you know then you don't have to worry about that post oh, I, 
yeah, or the post arriving. You know, if you wanted to take a game a day off to game, you can do that with digital downloads because it's there as of midnight. Yeah, you know it's going to be there. Yeah. The only thing that I like the post better for is occasionally you get it a day early. Yes. Which you definitely do yes. not do with a digital download. But then that's a massive gamble anyway. Yeah, exactly. But but um, Amazon have stopped doing that now. It used to be great with like Amazon or Play when they were around. Um, you always used to get like kind of movies or games, you know, that weekend. So if they were coming out on Monday, you'd normally get them on the kind of the Saturday. Yeah, it was an incentive or something to like use that. them, wasn't it? Really, it, it really was. It was an incentive to pre-order that you might get it a little bit early and you can be kind of playing it a bit early. But I've noticed recently that like, Amazon, obviously, their logistics have got better, and you do just and I have to wait until about I think it's about half two on that day so if you've taken the day off to game you can't play it until about three o'clock yeah that's annoying because the, yeah in the old days a post was at seven in the morning it's like half two now I, it, it, down, down it, my it way really is. Um, yeah yeah so that's no man's sky um this is bad news well it's not too bad but it's it's a bit bad uh uncharted 4 has been delayed again again it's the fourth time wow maybe if it's the fourth in the series you've got to delay it four times it's just the way it works <laughs> So, um, PlayStation blog gave us a little update. Um, should I read it verbatim? Um, so, blah, 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 blah. In an effort to meet considerable worldwide demand and to ensure that all gamers worldwide have the opportunity to play the game on day one, we have chosen to postpone the launch of the game by two weeks to allow extra manufacturing time. So, maybe it's to meet pre-order um, demand. Therefore, and charted for, A Thief's End has a new worldwide release date of May the 10th, 2016. Right. So there you go. It doesn't sound like they're ironing out problems or bugs with the game or making the game better. It sounds like they just need to work on the manufacturing, which means there may be a great demand for this game. As we know, there's 32 million PlayStations around the world, and I'd say a considerable amount of those are probably going to want Uncharted 4. Yeah, I still haven't heard that they haven't made the announcement of it going gold yet, though, have they? No, not that I've seen either. So, so what, you know, whether they are going to make a big... I mean, most companies for big games like that, for AAA titles or like that, they normally do kind of make a bit of a hurrah about it, and they haven't done that yet for Uncharted 4. But, you know, like I say, maybe they just need more time to... Rather than having it sell out, you know, and, and not be available in the shops, they just want to make sure that everybody gets a copy. Yeah, I was just about to say that I wish they'd delayed it a bit more because my birthday's on the 30th of May and that would make an absolutely cracking birthday present. And then I remembered that I'm not getting any more birthday presents or Christmas presents or anything <laughs> for about 20 years. <laughs> and it made me a little bit sad. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing for you anymore. There isn't. There's no more treats for me. <laughs> Just a hug from Sam. A, that's all you're oh, getting. <laughs> that's all I need. That's all I need. Um, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD comes out on Wii U. It does indeed. It comes out this Friday. On Friday the 4th of March, yeah. Yeah, so I thought I'd mention that because it took me by surprise. Um, I played it on the Wii. To be honest, I'm happy that I played it on the Wii. I didn't complete it on the Wii. And I'm not sort of hankering to play it on the Wii U. Um, it's kind of strange it's good timing that they're bringing this out with the rumors about the nx coming out and that there's going to be like a new proper hd zelda for for nintendo's new console so Mm -hmm. it works from it works from a marketing uh point of view for me because it's it's put it back into my consciousness um yes and if you have never played the game it's 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 okay you know i i I don't know. The last game, the last Zelda game that I really loved was, for me, Ocarina of Time was my favourite. Right. Um, and since then, oh, and Wind Waker. I was yeah, say Wind, Waker, Wind Waker. Sorry, Wind Waker. I really, really loved. Actually, I like that better. Um, but yeah, I wasn't bothered about Twilight Princess. No, I kind of uh, the graphics did it for me because it was very kind of brown, yeah. isn't and it? it? Was it's fuzzy, very kind wasn't of brown. it? And we got we got used it to the really HD, was. and I found it very irritating that fuzziness when I'd got used to a more of a crystal clear display. And there was lots of joystick waggling as well, yeah. even more so that you know. And I just found that it was very um, even because it was because it was out on the GameCube, wasn't it? And it was out on the Wii. Um, and so it was kind of that kind of cross generation, and it was just so fuzzy on the Wii. Um, but on the Wii U, it is 1080p. You know, it's quite it's interesting. I'm I saw a Digital Foundry did a comparison um, 
Digital Foundry did a comparison video um, on Eurogamer's website, and I saw it, and I was looking at it thinking, I never played this game, I really want to play it, but I just thought, there's no point buying this 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 remake, because I'm I'm probably just, I'm not going to play it. I'll probably play it for a day and just enjoy it, and then that'll be it, and then I'll turn my Wii Yeah, off. it's just a matter of, oh great, I've enjoyed that experience for a few hours, but... It, it, mm not got the investment to, to, to play at all and to be honest no. you know Nintendo they're dining out on games that are so old here you know it was developed for the GameCube as you say and now they're bringing you know they're trying to like uh, get some hoo-ha going for it coming out on the Wii U you know I just just get the NX sorted get some decent games on that and, and leave us alone until then <laughs> yeah I mean this came out on what 2006 yeah something like that yeah yeah so it's about 10 years old you know and obviously you know games are you know retro games are getting a resurgence and it's quite nice that they have updated it but I just think you know I just think you know like you say I'd rather have I'd rather have had a last farrah of a new that new Zelda game that was promised for Wii U uh fans yeah. i'd rather have that but you know i don't think we're going to get that i think that's going to be the the zelda nx that you were talking yeah, about yeah and uh euro gamers reported uh that shenmue uh is looking pretty good shenmue 3 um yu suzuki and his studio has given kickstarter back as a new look at some screenshots from the game and that's weird because i've either got so used to deleting his emails <laughs> or i haven't been emailed <laughs> um right. but i haven't seen the email um uh, anyway, I'll put the link in the bottom of the show notes, and it's looking pretty good. You know, it's looking quite quite beautiful. They were really lovely um, environment shots, yeah, weren't they? You know, really, they, nice. they showed it running. Did you watch the video? Yeah, and that just looked really lovely. I thought I thought the video looked really looked really yeah, stunning. For me, the the graphics here are good enough. You know, they're not like equivalent of what Shenmue was when it came out, because that would just be that would be have to be amazing and so much money but it's good enough that if the story is there and the emotionally engaging storylines there it could it could be a winner so it's good it's a good mm. thing i like it i like that a lot so yeah we'll pop that in the uh we'll pop that in the show mo- show notes and that was my little games release news galore section da 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 <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. It was like quite nice, just like you say, just to kind of go through, go through those kind of new game announcements that maybe uh, some people have missed. Yeah, there's just a few all all at once, and I just thought, oh crikey, let's, let's just gather them together. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic. And now it's time to head over to the VR news desk for the latest in VR. VR desk. Yeah, here we are at the VR desk. Um, watchers of uh, the video podcast last week we'll see we'll have some idea of what the vr desk looks like now won't they all shiny and silvery and reflective yes that lovely reflective desk that we have oh man it's made me feel shiny <laughs> <laughs> yeah fantastic um so the first piece of news is about htc vive as i discussed at the top of the show it was pre-orders opened on the 29th leap year day if you like um mm-hmm. and htc's shen yi uh boss at htc announced on Twitter that Vive sold 15,000 units in less than 10 minutes. Wow, that's good Made going. me feel better when I read that. Yes. It's like, it only sold one to a dimwit in the north of England. <laughs> <laughs> this way, there's 14,999 other dimwits. Yeah, people. hooray! <laughs> dimwits <laughs> unite. There's another T-shirt. <laughs> with, with, with the guy with Vive on it. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Awesome. That's really good. That's that's great. I mean, I did notice I had a quick look today on HCC's website, um, and I did see that the pre-orders now have gone up to May. Oh, wow. Wow. So they are shifted. So, I mean, I got my email at 10 past 3 for my right. pre-order, so I was probably within, well, I was in, within the first 10 minutes of getting it. So I'm hoping that yes. I'm going to be like April the 5th-ish, but we will see because I'm in UK. They may satisfy US orders first, I don't know. But HTC have got distribution centres all over. Which is, actually, I thought this. I thought HTC have got distribution everywhere because they do the phones. And that's yes. why it irked me a bit about the price of the shipping. But, from what I believe, it's a massive box with all this stuff in it. I, showed, I sent you a picture, didn't I, earlier of a developer um, who'd, received a, who'd received a Vive. And it was a big box, wasn't it? It was. It was ginormous. You know, you got a lot of stuff in there. You got the headset, uh, you got the controllers, you've got those lighthouse things. You know, there's a lot of stuff in there. So you know, they wonder it costs so yeah. much to uh, to ship. So 
that's really good. Fifteen thousand ten minutes. I'd love to know. Um, I wonder if they're going to start, you know, releasing what their uh, what the figures yeah, are. Well, Tech Radar did. Tech Radar did a quick sum at the fifteen thousand in ten minutes, and mm-hmm. they said pricing each unit at the American price of seven hundred ninety nine dollars, which incidentally doesn't include tax for the Americans. They were going to pay tax on that. Um, it was, adds up to roughly twelve million dollars in revenue in the first ten minutes. Mm. Wow! So crikey. I wonder what it's up to now, that and it's shifted to May. I wonder what kind of revenue they've yes. got now. So it seems yeah. that there's been some take up, which makes me happy. Um, so yeah, that was the that was a bit of Vive sales, um, and it was good that they released those sales figures because Oculus didn't. Well, that's a nice way of just kind of puffing your chest, saying, "Look who, look how many people yeah. are backing us in ten minutes." Yeah. You know, it's quite nice. I'm surprised Oculus didn't do the same, but uh, maybe they weren't as impressive maybe as that. Not. And it's maybe HTC Vive got more to prove because they sort of came out of nowhere. Um, because there was a big build-up with Oculus for years, wasn't there, with the development of the Kickstarter yeah. and everything. And then, really, just out of nowhere, HTC Vive came and said, we're new, we're doing this. And it, it got people's attention, but I don't, you know, it wasn't the, I don't think they had the same impetus as, as Oculus. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good news. And as we've said before, we'll be reporting on what HTC Vive is like um, once we get delivery of it. Um, once you get your face I get in my it. Face in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, another thing that I'm going to pop in the show notes is I got hold of a HTC Vive setup guide for Ooh. the developer edition and I just thought it might be interesting for people who have got a passing interest in VR or HTC Vive to have a look at it's pretty cool instructions um, done in sort of a Valve humorous uh, sort of layout it shows, I was going to say stick men, but they're not really stick men. Showing like a little, little cartoon strip of, uh, of setting it up. Um, and it, yeah, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of wires. Um, there's a lot of stuff there to, to look at. It explains about where to put the, uh, the base station, the lighthouse uh, sensors in your room. Um, it explains about the diameter of the room. It says maximum distance between the base stations should be 15 feet or 5 meters. Um, the area doesn't have to be a perfect square, um, but taping off the play space can be useful. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put a load of tape down. I, ho- I hope that you don't <laughs> have to put tape down for the sensors to see the tape to know where the <laughs> where the room is. Sometimes I wish that I'd read things like this before I made my order. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of cool information there about the setup. If you're interested in the tech and how it's going to connect to the TV and how it's going to... Uh, sorry, to the PC and how it's going to connect to your HMD head-mounted device, it's all in there. Um, it says that you can adjust the distance of the lenses um, between how close they are to each other. So depending on how your eyes are set, you can adjust for that, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can extend the head-mounted device outwards to adjust for glasses. Uh, right. And it made me think, the glasses bit made me pause for thought and ask this question, and I'm going to ask it you now. Right. So lots of people have said with, with this sort of thing about needing... To be able to fit glasses in there, yeah. Are you, have, have you you've yeah. read that, haven't you? People say, "Oh, I hope we can. I hope glasses are comfortable." But right, the screen is about two centimeters away from your eyes. Okay. Now I'm yes. short sighted. I wear contact lenses, and if I didn't wear contact lenses, right. I wear glasses, and I'm really short sighted. But right, I can I can read a book because because I'm short sighted. It means it's for long distances that I can't see. Now, if I mm-hmm. look through binoculars without my glasses or lenses on, in then it will be blurred, okay? Because I'm actually looking for a long distance. But if I hold my palm up to my face, or if I hold a book up to my face, within the distance that I can see, which is a few inches because I'm really short-sighted, I can read it perfectly. And it made me question, would you need glasses if you were short-sighted? I mean, if you you had the vision, the long-sighted vision, where you need glasses for close-up work, for reading, then Mm -hmm. I'd imagine that you would need them. But I was thinking for short-sighted people... Surely, because the screen is close to you, you wouldn't need the glasses in there. Yeah, no, you're right. Because, like you say, you know, if if you hold a book, if you're short sighted, you hold a book close, and you can see everything. So surely, because mm, that's an interesting yeah, one. Yeah, I sort isn't of it? thought I might tweet Vive or Oculus about it because the screen's right there. It's just, yeah, it's not really that you're looking into the distance. That's an illusion that's been created. Just like if I if I was yes. playing. I don't know, The Witness, that's got a nice sprawling environment, hasn't it? And I didn't have my glasses mm-hmm. on, but I had my face close enough to the monitor so that I could, you know, see it properly. Then yes. I'd be okay. And that's the same yes. sort of, that's replicating what you'd have with with the VR. So I'm thinking that when they talk about glasses, 
it must only be for people that blur out on close-up work. Um, and I just never thought of it because when I read about it, I always just thought, oh, it's short-sighted people, they can't see it. And then I, I was like, hold on a minute, that doesn't make sense. So there, I just thought, mm, I just thought mm. I'd mention it. Just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, yeah. That's, that is interesting because, like you say, yeah, no, I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out kind of how it would how it would work, you know, like like I say, without your glasses, whether you, it would just be blurred or whether that is actually doing the magnification for you. So, yeah, that's what yeah. we'll... It might be worthwhile, uh, you know, a, a quick maybe have a look at the Steam community discussion forums or something like that to see if anyone's already put that about kind of short and you know, short and long distance. Yeah, sites. yeah, I just thought it was an interesting point to make. And if I was Vive with the glasses thing, I would probably say, look, if if you're short sighted and you wear glasses because the screen's so close, you actually don't need your glasses in there anyway. But you know, long sighted, you would do. If it blur, mm. if it blur, if close work is blurs out, then this will blur out. But if you can see, you, you know, you know what I'm getting at. So yeah, yeah, uh, I might, I might uh, explore that further. And if I don't, I'll, I'll find out when I get Vive because I'll try it. I'll take my lenses out and my glasses off, and I'll stagger to the HMD, and I'll be like, I can see in VR, and I'll never come out of it again. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say. You'll never come out. One of the things that worried me just a moment ago, looking at this um, PDF that you will we'll put in the show notes, um, was that there was a cable going between the lighthouse um, little kind of the base stations, but they 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 clearly mark that that's developer only. Yeah, because you know you know they're wireless, um, but there was like some kind of fifty foot cable that was going between the yeah. two of them. I was like, holy moly! You know, you'd have to have a cable running across your room, but that's just purely for the developer. Yeah. I mean, you're already going to get this uh, 50 foot odd cable that's attached to the HMD because that's going to run all the all the graphics which can't be done wirelessly because it's like 90 frames, 90 frames per second data that you got there and that's really the next hurdle isn't it is to make these HMDs not only to be able to sense your you in real space but also to untether you from the PC and that's going that kind yes. of data transfer I don't know how long we are from that yeah, so so what you've got is coming out of the back of your PC, you've got HDMI and USB. That goes into an interface box, and then you've got HDMI and USB going into your head-mounted device. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Right. So you get a short set of three. You've got HDMI, USB, and power that go into your PC. I think they're relatively short yeah. into the, the interface box. And then you've mm-hmm. got the really long cable that sort of it's the same three, but it's like three into one. And then that goes all the way to your HMD. And really, the, the, I'm sure that they're going to be busy working out, working on what... It's all about wireless speed, that, isn't it? It really is. It really is. This this setup guide, I'm just kind of flow, I'm just flowing through it. It's, it's quite awesome. tongue-in-cheek, it's just isn't like, it? It is. It's just like Portal. Um, <laughs> That's it. It's through, just like Portal. And throughout the entire thing, one of the characters is holding a cup, or holding like a white mug... And if you go down to the appendix, they actually have a link to that mug on Amazon. Iconic mug. <laughs> and it's just a white mug. And I'm just like, awesome. Well done, Valve. That's just so cool. I love it. It's really cool instruction book, isn't it? I really like it. Um, so, yeah, well worth a look. Uh, the next item that we have in the VR desk is... It's a nice little piece. Phil Spencer, our mate, wishing Sony all the best with PlayStation VR. So that's nice, isn't it? Um, it is indeed. It's sort of a backhanded compliment, though, because he also says that it's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I wish you every success. But, and this sort of relates to what we were talking before about what you said about um, improving or evolving the Xbox and not just keeping it, you know, as a static piece of hardware. So he said that he wishes them every success, but he's not sure how it's going to work, VR, how VR is going to work in a closed ecosystem. He thinks that it's a bit early. So that's quite interesting. Um, and a closed ecosystem being just the PlayStation 4. Yeah, and being the fact that, like as we said, I think, last week, with Dr. Richard Marks saying that that was a good thing, that it's a closed system, because it means everybody's the same, so they can get an yeah. equivalent 60% extra out of the PS4 than an equivalent PC, because it's made to do a job of playing games, and they're all exactly the same. And when you make a tweak on one, you've made it on 32 million. Um, Phil's saying... He thinks that it's not really going. It's not right for a closed system like that. It's too early, right? So yeah. So he says that um, he, he's gone on record and said that Microsoft is taking something of a wait and see approach. And for now, the company is betting on Windows 10, which is going to serve as the platforms. This all this unifying stuff. They're probably so busy with all this unifying stuff, they haven't got time. 
yeah, to Anthony Arwin as well. Oculus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, because they they want to get if they're making this change, this is a big change. So they're probably thinking, right, like we've got to get our house in order here. This is a new platform. This is a new thing. This is an evolution of bringing bringing in line and unifying Windows and Xbox. That's a big thing. They want people to recognise that as one brand before we start giving them options of VR. So this is probably where he's coming from. But they didn't they didn't skip on it, did they? Because at that Microsoft event that we've been talking about um in this episode, they did show um Holo- um Minecraft working on Oculus, didn't they? Yeah. They had Palm they had Palmer Lucky there um showing showing Minecraft and Oculus. There's a really good uh, there's a really good video of Major Nelson kind of playing Minecraft in full VR and that looked uh, I thought that would make you happy, does Oh yeah, it does, but I'm a bit worried that it might not come to uh HTC Vive, which is which is scary. because uh, Well then it'll be an Oculus o- Oculus exclusive. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about because I'm not getting an Oculus as well. It was it's one or the other for me and I wanted that freedom yeah. of walking about. Um but yeah, he, a quote from him was that our bet on VR right now is an open platform for innovation, like Windows 10, mm-hmm. is the best place for something that this early in its incubation should be. And he said, you can say Minecraft will be the killer app, but nobody's bought a copy of Minecraft for VR. I didn't even know you could buy Minecraft for VR though yet. So I don't really know where he's going with that quote. Um, and he says that they support, they're right behind both Oculus and Vive. And Ooh. Valve. He says, we're supporting Valve, we're supporting Oculus. Because, like, we sort of... I don't think you could blame us for thinking that they they, they, were, they were back in Oculus because they're giving the pad to Oculus, aren't they, to, to ship with the Oculus. Indeed, indeed. Um, but he says, we're supporting Valve, we're supporting Oculus, we want to make sure Windows 10 is a great place for those developers that want to build those ideas for what might make the killer app for VR. I like his attitude, really. He's, he's, he's a very much about... He's supporting innovation, isn't he? And just gaming and and technology. And it's like, yes. you know, they're successful. I think he sort of comes from a standpoint of we're doing our own thing and we're successful and we're happy with that. But we're not going to be against everybody else. We want to embrace that for the greater good. And I like that. I think that he draws some flack to him. It's like with this thing with PC. My opinion of like bringing out Quantum Break on PC is that's great. More people can play it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I think I think you know Phil Spencer is just you know he is a gamer. He on Twitter this week he did say you know that he's looking forward to playing um, Uncharted Four. You know, he reckons that Uncharted Four is going to be a good game, and I like that. You know, and Shuhei Yoshida does the same thing about Xbox games. You know, they are complementary to each other, and and that's how it should be. You know, I don't think yeah, and necessary for competition. Yes, we don't need those. We don't. You know, the 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 gamers that want to kind of get in the console war they do enough of that you know i'd rather have the two heads of those studios or the two kind of public figures of those studios getting along enjoying each other and showing me that they're gamers rather than you know kind of backhanded comments or or kind of just full out hating on each other i'd rather see the way that shuhei and phil are 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 at the moment rather than then actually have them kind of you know just just bickering at each other yeah absolutely coexist mm. coexist so that, i thought that was a good thing and um it, yeah it's sort of a bit backhanded say he's, he's hedging his bets there he's saying he wishes them all the best but there's no way they'd risk it but they're too busy doing their own thing anyway <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's like well good luck we'll wait and see if you make money and then maybe we'll jump yeah, in. yeah <laughs> and you know they're in, a, they're in a good position to do that <laughs> so yes. why not yeah why not um so also with microsoft they've released some hololens details so we've had a reveal of the HoloLens hardware specs, which is pretty cool. Um, so as we, we know what HoloLens is, it's a, it's an aug- well, they call it mixed reality, so an augmented reality, mixed reality device where it overlays the virtual over the real. Um, but it's got the problem that it's kind of like a, through a letterbox. Through, so you've got this like glasses on your face, this head-mounted device on your face that you look through, but the viewing area is quite restrictive at the moment. Um, yes. They've maintained, really, that it's not a gamer's device. It's going to go more to corporations and in the corporate um, world, first of all. But anyway, they uh, have announced the specs. So they've built an entire, as I've said before, that but this is the official, I suppose, that they've done it. They've built an entire Windows 10 device into the headset. Um, it uses a custom-built Microsoft holographic processing unit so we've got an mm-hmm. hpu now holographic Ooh. processing unit an hpu i'm sure over the years we're going to hear more 
about that sort of processor. Um, yes. And an Intel 32-bit processor. So the cool thing about this is, like, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's untethered straight away because they've managed to... They don't need the wireless aspect of getting what's on the PC to the HMD because the HMD contains the computer. Right. Maybe that's what Valve need to do with HTC Vive and maybe Oculus for free roaming stuff. Maybe they need to sort of not stream it, stream that kind of massive 90 frames per second data wirelessly from a PC. Maybe they're looking at getting PCs that are so miniature that they can do that kind of heavy work within the head-mounted device. Maybe that's the way they'll go. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Untethering will be Oculus 2.0 or something yeah. like that. Untethering is going to be revolutionary. <laughs> mm. um, so they've got a variety of sensors inside the HoloLens. This is all from uh, TheVerge.com. Um, it includes an inertial measurement unit, an ambient light sensor, four environment understanding cameras, uh, interesting cameras. These combine with a depth sensing camera that allows the HoloLens to map space. Um, it's also got a 2 megapixel HD camera to capture videos and photos. Four microphones inside the headset are used to pick up voice commands from users. Um, the hardware specs, you've got 2 gig of RAM, 64 gig of flash storage, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, the Bluetooth support is going to allow HoloLens owners to make use of a new clicker accessory that's included in the box, which is going to replace the air tap gestures that you may have seen on the videos to navigate around the space. Oh, right, okay. Maybe people didn't find that very easy to do for some nope. reason. Maybe it didn't feel right. Um, or maybe it didn't get recognised correctly, and a device actually clicking can send a signal better than your finger. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't It doesn't go into that. I'm just, uh, just speculating there. Uh, Microsoft say, the entire HoloLens headset will weigh no more than 579 grams. The battery's going to run for around two to three hours of active use. It's fully functional when it's charged over micro USB, and the device will also have a standby time of two weeks. That's not bad, that. That's good. That's yeah. good. It's just that they just miss out the one important thing, and the field of view will encompass your entire vision. <laughs> That's the thing that they haven't done. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. It'll have a carrying case, clicker accessory charger, additional nose pads, <laughs> which that's probably a nice thing. If it rests on your nose, and then I'm swapping to you, I know what you're like with your sanitizer. You know, you're <laughs> going to want carry sanitizer. <laughs> you're going to want a separate nose pad after I've been yes. sweating in it. <laughs> um, so they've released a final image of the Hololens Development Edition, and that's going on sale now. Yeah, it looks identical to the units that the company's been testing for ages, um, and they're going to be si- shipping it to developers on March the thirtieth. And if you want one, and you're a developer, or you want to pose as a developer because you're that keen on it, it's priced at three thousand dollars. Wow! 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 So Hololens has reached developer shipping, you know, in in not in not much time really. So that'll be interesting to see what. What kind of ideas the devs come out with that? Because it's another, it's another, another dimension in VR, isn't it? It really is. It really is. I mean, it, it's quite interesting because obviously when they released this this kind of dev kit, they also did show some games, didn't they? Kind of quote unquote games. One of them was a young conquer game where you had a young looking conquer from Conquer's Bad Fur Day, uh, kind of jumping all around your house. And and you're right, you know that kind of field of view that did come into play when they were showing you that demo. Such a shame. You know, it was every now and then Conquer disappeared, <laughs> you know, so it was, and then you had to tilt your head to kind of catch up with him. Yeah, I mean, I'm still reeling about that A3 demo when uh, they put Minecraft on the coffee table. Yes. And it's just, and they did that live, didn't they, you know, and that that was just so cool. But, yeah, the the field of view thing, you know, the, the, the way that they show that, when they, when they show those videos, they don't usually show the narrowness of the field, field of view. And that's a shame because... When it started, everybody thought that it was completely encompassing your field of view, and it really, really isn't, and it's just a shame. But it'll get there. It'll get there. And if it's a success with the devs and if it's a success in the corporate world, there'll be the money there to improve it. And uh, my goodness me, if that field of view encompasses you with a wireless, untethered headset like that, it's like, you know, the world's your oyster. It really is. It really is. That would just be. That would be fantastic. The, 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 you imagine what you can get from that. That would just. You know, I'm always. I still love the the idea that they had 
previously, which was the one where you know you're you're looking at a TV screen, you know you're looking at a TV screen, you're looking at Netflix, and then you want to make that bigger because you've got a blank wall, and then that with that blew me away yeah. in that demo. You know, and you just the, draw it, you just grab a corner like you drag a window, and you just drew it bigger on the wall. That was it. You know, that's yeah. all they did, and that that yeah. I just thought was oh, I just thought that was kind of groundbreaking. And, and then he said, "Follow me," and the, and it detached from the wall and followed him to the next room, and then he just pinned it on the next wall. Yes, because he needed to move rooms. Awesome. Yeah. It's just fantastic. It's just absolutely superb. And with that awesome, superb, fantastic note, that's about it for this episode. So a big thank you for, for listening. Don't forget, you can keep up with us at gamersofthelostspark.com. You can find us. We're on Facebook, on Twitter. We're at Lost Spark Pod. Um, we're also on YouTube as well. Um, you can also find us on the PS4 uh, community, which is Gamers of the Lost Spark. Um, Darren, where can we find you online? Yeah, you can get me as Wythermator on PS4, Xbox One and Twitch. Daz a gamer on YouTube and at Daz Whittam on Twitter. Um, for me, I'm Chessman on um, Xbox. I am Chessman UK on Twitter and PS hyphen Chessman on the PlayStation Network. If you have any feedback, um, please send it to our email address. That email address is feedback at gamersoflostspark.com. Also, if you're feeling generous, please leave us a uh, review on, on iTunes. It helps the uh, pod get noticed and get onto that all important main page. Quick um, thank you to the guys at Just Add Popcorn. To our friends at Just Add Popcorn, they put a lovely... um they put a lovely uh, review up on iTunes, which uh, which was really nice. It kind of made my Sunday when I read that. So thank you very much, Just Had Popcorn. Uh, it was a, a really good review. Thank you very much. Um, and with that, that's it. So um, that's about it for the episode. We'll catch you next week. So uh, bye for now. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye, everyone. See ya.